ze bomzakken lakken. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Little <laughs> Jolly Gamer Show. Got to put the hands into it. Yeah. This is episode 114. 14. I'm Brandon. I'm Jacob. And this is the Little Jolly Gamer Show. We talk about video games on here, and before... <laughs> we're going to really talk about yeah, video games. Yeah, we're really going to... Now, this is a big episode, and I want to point out, before we even read our trivia card, and yeah. I'm going to explain that in a second, I do want to say, if this is your first time listening to the show, thank you so much. Yeah. Go look at our RSS feed and subscribe on whatever distributor you like the most, yeah. right? You like... If you like Apple Podcasts, if you like Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Spotify, uh, Castbox, maybe Overcast, Podcast Addict, any of those. Yeah. Because guess what? If there's an RSS feed somewhere, we're, we're probably there. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening, and tell your friends about us and subscribe. We talk about video games. If you like video games, this is the show for you. Yes. And I'm actually thinking about making an episode like titled "Why Should You Listen to This Show." Ooh. And it's really, it's, I got, I got things, it's I got poignant. things, I got things, I, I got things. That word right? but, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't, my brain is about our collective brain juice is not. Yeah, my brain is working. At, I'm, I'm at about fifty five percent capacity, yeah. which is pretty Fair. good. Uh, now, in case you're not familiar with the show, yeah. we do start off the show with our trivia card. <laughs> I'm gonna read two trivia questions okay. about video games, video game trivia. And you don't say. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Uh, and we are going to read the answers at the end of the show. So questions now, answers later. Yes. So you get to listen all the way to the end of the show. Can't skip nothing. You can't skip it. Can't do it. If you're listening to us on anything, it's, it's not going to allow you to do it. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's not going to allow you There's a programming do. software. If you, do, if you do it, you're going to get an email. It's going to say, hey, you, you, owe, you owe Brandon and Jacob $17,000 each. What litigation did you get going to make uh, that? Write that up. That's from uh, Tamriel. Okay. Uh, yes. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> here's your questions. Uh, first question. Mona Sachs is the femme fatale love interest of which video game character? I don't think I know this. And Do I know this? Maybe. Okay. You know you know who the person is, but you okay. might not know. You never played that game. Okay. Anyway, question number two. Who is the first boss in the original Crash Bandicoot? Wow. Oh. We're gonna I answer know that one. We're, we're gonna answer both those questions at the end of the show. Now, under normal circumstances, we talk a little bit about video games we've been playing. Mm -hmm. We talk a little bit about video game news. Yep. We do side quests where we talk about maybe a movie we've seen. Yep. Who knows? But today, because mm. of the circumstances of E3 and all that news coverage, yeah. there is a little bit of gaming news going on right now. But we'll just sandbag it to the next episode because it's not a whole lot. Yeah. Um. But we want to talk about the video game. Man, we've, we've been, been playing been... some games. We have a lot to talk Holy about. Holy cow. That's I've some got, backlog stuff, some I've current got stuff. nine games. Seven. I got nine games to talk about. So, hey, hey, I got nine games. I got nine games. What you been playing? playing? <laughs> <laughs> What's this you say? Uh, I got the... I got, got the glow sticks, sticks with the yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he also says like... Um, everybody want to holla at Pop? What you need? I got it. If I ain't got it, I can find it. Understand? <laughs> Popeye gets referenced on this this episode. Fair amount. Uh, yeah, I should have. Yeah. He's in jail, him. isn't he? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> what you in for? I stabbed somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen to our Gamer Tales episode. Yes. Okay. Uh, for that, it's 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 a really good episode. Um, so I think the best way to start off this episode is with Ratchet and Clank. You want to start off the bat with I it? I want to start off oh with Ratchet and Clank. Oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared. I thought that was going to be the coup de grace. I want to, I want to start with either Ratchet and Clank or Final Fantasy VII Yuffie DLC. Let's do Yuffie. Let's start with and Yuffie. end with Ratchet. I gotta end. I gotta get my. I gotta get my sauce going. Oh, oh you get stirring. Uh, yeah, okay, my we're gonna, we're gonna get, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Let's start with the Yuffie DLC. Okay. <sighs> So, from a Final Fantasy VII yes. veteran to a Final Fantasy VII new entry, right? So, you're sure. you're new to the Final Fantasy VII Absolutely. universe, and I am all about Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. It might be one of my, if not one of my favorite games. It's your, yes. it's probably my favorite game of all time. I love Final Fantasy the original, Final Fantasy VII. Yes, and I absolutely love this remake. I'm going to answer that for you. It is. Yeah. So, so much so there's a child out there. Yeah, there's a child Florida out there. Spider. Yeah, who has? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say he's named after, but he's named um, in. Um, in a reference to speaking of, speaking he, of him, he's trying to break into the studio. Right Let now. me talk about it. Yeah, he, he hears he hears <laughs> that we're talking about Final Fantasy VII. Oh. So, um, what do you think about this as a whole? Oh man! And by the way, by the way, we're spoiling. Oh yeah, this is a completely this is, spoiler this is your spoiler alert. We're, we're about to any game that we talk about expect spoilers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't, just skip ahead like a little bit. Uh, each game we'll probably talk about about. The middle chunk's probably going to be stuff that doesn't matter. But yeah. Ratchet is going to be, yeah. and this is going to be. Been, there's going to be a couple games that and have no story. I think this one's the most important for spoilers, to be honest. Probably. Probably over Ratchet. Probably, yeah. um, 
So yeah, from my experience, uh, I want to. I'll just say first off the negative. I just feel like it was a little too short. Yeah, I clocked about. I didn't even check my hour play time. Seven, eight hours before I, mean, I was finished? I'll, I'll say this. It's not bad, but if you break down the fact that Final Fantasy VII in the whole was a what? How, how many hours? 60. About. And that was 60 bucks, and this was 20. Now, we did get the, uh, the PlayStation 5 upgrade with it, so you, you oh, factor that into the price. Right. But 20, I mean, that's a third of the, the I first think, game, and now we put maybe 10 hours in it. I think for the quality of it, but I agree with that. The price is I'm on, is, I'm on, I'm on is justified. I did not yes. feel like I was ripped off. I do feel like it was sh- on the short side, but I think it was because I wanted more. Like, I, yeah, yeah, by the yeah, time yeah, yeah, I was yeah, yeah, done, yeah. No, no, no. It's, yes. not that, it's not that I felt ripped off. I was yes. just like, man, I don't want this to end. Right. Uh, like the, and the boss, fact, the boss ends, and I'm going, oh. Yeah, it, it does end abruptly. Yeah, it, oh. it ends very abruptly. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Holy cow, that that the game rips your heart out at the very end too. <laughs> um, but let me just talk about this. Okay, I'll say this. Um, I played I played fourteen. I've talked about this on the podcast. And fourteen likes to take all of the classes from across the genre of episode, not episodes. What you call them? Series. Uh, the franchise. Franchise, the whole... whatever, and and makes them the puts them so in the MMO format. Things like white mage, right. and black mage, Dragoon. and fighter, and dark Thief, knight, yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, so ninja is one of those classes in that game, and one of my favorite. If not, it's actually they're my highest level character in that game, and that's what Yuffie is. Uh, yes. And so having that. Man, I enjoy the crap out of this combat. She's a little squishy. Absolutely. And but... it's, it's so cool because in the original game you play as, you know, Cloud, Barrett, Aerith, and Tifa. I'm and say, they, you don't th- touch her. Do you touch her in the turn base at all? Or is she just a pairing character? Sorry, is she oh, in your party? Oh, Yuffie? So I'm going to give you some backstory on, okay. on this versus the original. Sure. Because I think it's going to be interesting. But um, in... In the in the original or in Final Fantasy VII remake, mm-hmm. not Yuffie, right. uh, they, all the characters play different. You know, you yeah, got right. yeah, it's Barrett, who's kind of like a, a, a ranged tank. A rank, yeah, uh, you have Aerith Cloud, who's kind of like your all arounder, uh, healer, magic caster with Aerith, and then yeah. straight DPS is, uh, and probably the most Tifa. fun character to use. Absolutely, Tifa. Um, she's like your rush down. You want to build up stagger with her. You want to do the damage with yes. Cloud. You want to oh stay. Yeah, it do it and it. it, it We've talked, we've gushed over Final Fantasy VII Remake before, but touche to Square because they added another character in here who feels completely unique. Yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the biggest complaints, not just from people that I know, but from just like a general consensus about Final Fantasy VII Remake, is a lot of people don't like how how squished the environments were. And they were like, it, yeah. everything's a lot narrower. It's like there's, you know, the battlegrounds are kind of squished. The I'm camera, into that at the camera kind of. They definitely rectified that yeah. in this one because it's a lot opener. It's opener. It's, it's open. Open. It's it's wide open. The mm-hmm. battlegrounds are open, and Yuffie takes complete advantage of that. Throw well, in they, that well, ninja they need star because she's kind of a range slash melee. She's yeah. a bo- it's a hybrid. So yeah, let's, let's let's break down her combat. So basically, she has her giant shuriken, shuriken that she mm-hmm. uses, right? And you can use that just slash away with it. Yeah. Or you can throw it and have it kind of stick and that will kind of do DPS and you can do like your ninjutsu, ninjutsu spell casting. Which is and, just out of 14. It's so good. Yeah, and the oh, spell so casting good. is so interesting because one of the first abilities um, from your weapon, because uh, like in the original, you as you use a weapon, you, you can learn those, yeah. those abilities permanently. It, it, that ninjutsu has physical properties, and yep. you can change them to elemental properties, mm-hmm. and you can use that as a replacement for using magic, which is super useful in hard mode. Because um, in the original, you didn't have anyone who had that ability, so no, you just had to yeah. cast. Uh, so if there's someone who's weak against fire, you got to cast fire, and that costs some of that precious yeah, MP yeah. that you, you don't use refill. Cure or cure, yeah, yeah, you don't get to refill in hard mode. Uh, and it's so interesting uh, balancing throwing the uh, shuriken and um, causing that ATB to kind of build up faster, and then kind of keeping everyone at bay, and then dodging, and even using the uh, as you get later in the game, you get the brumal form. Um, yeah. Did you ever use that? Oh, I, I, I remember I mentioned that first. I was like, I don't know if I like the boomerang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then, same here. And same then, here. and then all of a sudden, like you'd see that you'd see that that flash of the spell being announced by the character, like uh, uh-uh, and you poof, and you teleport out. Oh, oh, so it's good. So sad. And then that gives you a big flipping chunk of ATB when you do it. Absolutely. If it's, if it's successful. Right. Um, I just found myself like, I think this game, I think if I want to go back to answer your question, I love kind of let it marinate in my head for a second. I think that, I remember I mentioned a couple of times after we gushed about 7 Remake, I was like, I want to go back and play this game. I never did. Because mm-hmm. just on the combat God, itself. It's so and then I jumped right back into it. I was like, yep, this solidified. I wanted to go back. This combat's so, so good. I love... Pausing, hitting X, and just watching everything slow, and I'm like, hmm, 
Hmm. I'm a lot more like frantic, dodging, blocking, parry, and throw it, and then all of a sudden, boom, I pause. I'm like, let me think. I'm gonna maybe use my TB to go ahead and cure Sonan right now because he needs to stay alive. Yeah, so to keep me that, we haven't even d- jumped to that. So you get another yeah. party member. You yeah. get, you Sonan. get so, uh, Sonan, and he uh, is a very interesting character. Yeah. We're, we're gonna break down the story stuff in a minute, but he in combat wise, it's very interesting. At first, I was like, oh, you don't yeah, get, you get to, you, you don't I was like, play him. Yeah, religion. you don't get you to actually switch. control them. Yeah. But then after I started to learn how to use the synergy system, yes. oh, where you yeah. can tap L two, and then all of a sudden. He comes um, to you, rushes to yeah, you. He rushes yeah, he rushes to you, and so he he's fighting side by side with you. Mm-hmm. That changes Yuffie's default attacks, yep. like with her her basic slashing attacks. And you can link up some of your abilities yeah, that you use with ATP. Yeah. And so you basically Rolling. can double the damage. And But you would think, well, why not just stay synergized all the time? Mm-hmm. And you start to realize when you unsynergize, you can use Sonon to incite and, yeah, and provoke people. Mm-hmm. So if you, he can draw people away from... Yuffie because she's squishy. squishy. Yes. It's 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 almost like they designed it to work. You know? <laughs> and it, right. it works. It, it feels really good. Yeah. Um, I think combat wise, I was never bored. Oh uh, no, absolutely. I was not. always I was itching oh, for more. So good. Uh, I was. Um, I think I, I think I was with you too. I was like, man, you don't get to control Sonon, but then the uh, the more you get you get to play. Yuffie's so engaging because of her diversity between melee and range, and you're having to figure out what you want to do. Sometimes I think balancing another character might have been a little too much. So it's, yeah. it's easy to just go, Sonon, hit him with this real quick. And then you go back to Yuffie. And- I think she was designed in like to have both range and close combat mm-hmm. because of that reason. Because yeah. she wasn't going to be with the original cast, like the original yeah, yeah, party yeah. members. So... I wonder how they're going to yes, it's interesting. how they're going to integrate her to the future story. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get into that yeah. later. But yeah. uh, another important feature is Fort Condor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, which God. is I'm glad you brought that up. Is a mini game really based her. on an event. I will also explain to you later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a real time strategy game. I guess I should go ahead and explain now. So Fort Condor is actually an optional area you can go to. Mm-hmm. Um, because after you leave Midgar in the original game... Oh, we're talking about the backstory. Yeah, oh, and, in the okay. original game, you only have to go... You go to this small village where Cloud proceeds to tell you his backstory. And then mm-hmm. after that, there's a couple optional stops. There's okay. a Chocobo farm that you pretty much were forced to use. But if you were good enough, you didn't have to go there. Mm-hmm. You, you cut through a cave, and then you can go to Fort Condor. and that's around G, is it? No, absolutely okay. not. not, not. <laughs> the okay. cave of the G is haunted as balls. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you can go to Fort Condor, yeah. and... If you don't want to, you never even have to go there. Okay. Now, later in the game, it kind of makes you go there, but like late game. Yeah. But in the beginning, you can just totally pass it up and go to, um, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to say Junyon, J-U-N-O-N. Okay. Uh, or Junon. I, I guess we'll say, find out. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. I say Junyon. Mako. Uh, because Junon sounds weird. Yeah. Uh, but Junyon was the main place you need to go to. Like That is where the story proceeded. Uh, so they basically took this mini game from the original where you get to like uh, you know, spend units and you actually spend your in-game money. You actually have to fund oh. this real battle. Uh, with so there's Shinra. a conflict going on mm-hmm. in this place in yeah, real yeah. time. In yeah, real Shinra life. wants Fort Condor for okay. reasons. I won't explain. Um, and you actually fund the war with your money to uh, put the units down okay. and to... It's a very similar system. It's done much better in this Yuffie DLC yeah, because it's a board uh, game. Yeah, in, in the original, it's like a vertical map, and you're you're trying to prevent them from getting to the top, and they're okay. coming up from the bottom, and you're yeah. placing units. And you can put like catapults and rolling rock traps and stuff. Okay. Uh, and it looked way more primitive. Yeah. Uh, but this one, it's like you've got th- uh, in the Yuffie DLC, you've got three towers, yep. and a small little like field in front of it, mm-hmm. two tunnels. And yeah, two lanes. And then a mirror of that is your enemy. And mm-hmm. basically you put down units and you got swords, bows, and shields. Mm-hmm. And swords beat bows and bows I, beat I shields and shields later, beat yeah. swords. And so it's rock, paper, scissors right. and you won't put your units down but certain units don't attack things that are in the air. Right. And certain units don't attack the um, the actual fortress itself like the bases mm-hmm. and some of them only attack like the attack dog. Yeah, it goes it, straight to the base. Yeah, it doesn't use anything else which mm-hmm. I actually use that and it works to my advantage on one of them. I'll talk about that in a minute. But it, it all works together for a fun little mini game that's nothing special but I, I found myself just kind of addicted to it for a while. For a minute, I was like, ugh, I'm not too good at RTS. I don't Same. care for this. At first, I was doing it backwards. Yeah. And then I got I got frustrated. I was like, oh, I'll come back to this later. Yeah. But then once I got into it, oh, man, I couldn't put it down. Yeah. I had to... I So what did you do for Chadley? I had to... I basically had to beat him in his own game, literally mirroring what he did, which was just exactly. spamming, spamming. That is exactly what I, 
That's exactly what I did. I had the same exact... Uh, the thing that got me the most with him was that flying the helicopter, uh, the yeah. helicopter guy. Yeah, I because don't because he was he, one because he was well, oh well I was playing on hard mode. Okay, uh, well I beat it on normal and then no, I beat no. it on hard. Okay, uh, but it was hard because I I would have things the things that would come out of the barracks did not attack flying things and right. the, and then the slugs were countered by mm -hmm. that because he's technically a sword. Right, uh, and I ended up. Doing that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna beat him at his own game. He can spawn those things, but for every one of those that he spawns, I'm spawning a dog. Yeah, ah. I put a dog and I rushed him. I rushed him with okay. the dog. So I kept him occupied, and while he was occupied, I would just put a dog over here. And the dogs were getting shot down, yeah. but they were doing enough damage on it to drop those. You can those spam those. They're like three, two? Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah they're only two. And the bad thing about hard mode, there is no. There's no materia? There's no sudden death. Oh, okay. Well, uh -huh. there, is, there is sudden death, but. Um, well, wait, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, the sudden death is against you. Because okay. in the original, it was like, as soon as you got an attack on one or you dropped one of them, yeah. you won. No. You have to drop it all, and they get to drop just one on your side. Okay. So it's totally against you. So you're highly incentivized to kill them before the before time, the time runs out. Okay. You don't want to wait. You don't want to wait on um, on sudden death. Yeah. In, in hard mode, at least. And easy, in our, our normal mode, I don't want to say easy, because it's it, it tough when you don't have the right pieces. Because uh, you get the pieces in the game. As you go, right. You can get them from the shopkeepers. Mm. You can get them from treasure chests. From chest. beating people. Uh, yeah, and from beating people, and you get the different boards. That mm. was what I thought was really fun. It was using yeah, the upgrading boards, the boards. Which really I, cool. I stuck with the assassin board the whole time. That's what I did, too. That's I was just right. like, I'm just going to spawn, spawn, spawn. Yeah. I, yep. I don't need the magic. Screw the magic. Yeah. Uh, but just the fact that we're able to hold a conversation just about this mini game is fun. Right. And it's fun. Right. It's fun because in other Final Fantasy games, you might not know this, but in like Final Fantasy VIII, in Final Fantasy IX, there's card games that are very similar to this where you can go and push square. And no matter what point the story is, it could be the end of the world, it could be the beginning of the game, and you can just be like, hey, you want to play a game of cards? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. And you can just start a mini game right okay. there. And so I think this is kind of a reference to that, but instead of any old character, it's like specific Sweet people. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool because it's referencing the old people, the, the minor characters in the, the it's, original. Yeah, it's good to see Yuffie be yeah. able to interact with Wedge and Jesse yeah. and Johnny and Roche, who's Roche, a right. character. Oh my gosh, she's I'm, so happy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Kira who's a ripoff of Yuffie. Right. Um, so I, it was really interesting to, to see her interact with characters like that. And of course, my my stupid butt was like, you know, I'm going to go in the seventh heaven as Yuffie, because why not? Mm. And I, did you try to go in the seventh heaven? No. When you go, uh, they, they the, bar out? The, 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 the whispers push you out. The whisper uh, goes. So she's like, oh, that's weird. I can't get in there. <laughs> and I was like, ah, clever. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah. Um, so I think story-wise, and, yeah. and by the way, Materia System... Great as ever. Yeah. A couple new sure. materia in there. Yeah. A new summon. Uh, Ramu. I don't know if you got to use. Uh, 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 no, no, I did not. Man, I did. I saw. Oh, no, I didn't good. go back and. I didn't go back and do. Yeah. The once you level up, he's he's kind of a cakewalk. When you okay. have Sonon and all that. Yeah. Uh, Beard man, guy. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, he's so good. Yeah. He is so mm. good, especially whenever you're. Come when, about him. when you're in the Shinra place and hard mode, it's really useful because he's electric based and all those enemies. Yeah. Are, uh, it's, it's Scarlet. Dad, go. I'm, yeah. Mm, fighting I wish Scarlet. I'd known that. Mm -hmm. Scarlet and hard mode was kind of tough, and when I spawned Rambo, she was done. Yeah. Because she was just completely weak against them. Yeah. Um, so a couple new things here and there, but story-wise... Yeah. Okay, so Yuffie, in the original, okay. is an optional character. You don't even have to get her. You don't need... Like, you can, put, you can complete the whole game and never even know she was there. Okay. Um... The reason that is, her and Vincent Valentine were two characters that were developed later in the cycle, and they weren't given like mandatory stories that were integrated straight into the main narrative of, of Final Fantasy VII. So you could play the whole game and miss some of that stuff. But having them in there would actually increase the value of the story, because when you go to Wutai, because you actually get to go to Wutai, if you have Yuffie in your party, there's a whole side story about okay. that. And um, if you don't have her, you just go there and it's like, ah, uh, yeah. We lost a war and we hate it here. Yeah. And we don't like you. And we're gonna sell you stuff that's really expensive. Yeah. That shouldn't be this expensive. Uh, but you can win the trust of Wu Tai and you can go to Turtles Paradise, which is a, mm. uh, a I don't know if that's a translation error, but it's called the Happy Turtle in yeah. this one. Where the little turtle guy, it's yeah. a reference to the Happy uh, the Turtles Paradise Turtles Paradise flyers you can find in the original game. Right. So it was it still a restaurant. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. You can actually go into the restaurant. Okay. It's really cool, and you find the flyers all over yeah, the game. The music's so fun. And when you find them all, you got like a prize in the end. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of some backstory on Yuffie. Uh, and you don't find her until 
after Midgar. Yeah. You can find her right before you get to Junyun or Junyun. You can, you can find her right there in this like this little patch of force, and you literally you fight her. It's a random battle. You beat her, and then it goes to this cutscene where you have to answer all the questions in the right order. If you don't, show like she's like, hey, can you open up your uh your inventory? Oh, that's right. You she's told like, me this. Yeah, can you open up your inventory and give me a potion? And like you'll or like you can change the party. Like I'm in your party now. Yeah. And like you would go to the party, and she wouldn't be there when you would back out of it she's she'd be gone, gone. She took and you had to go she fight her again no nope. well she takes the material later when you join okay. so if you go to Wu Tai, spoiler alert with her in your party in the original game mm-hmm. she would take all your material and you had to chase her all the way to Wu Tai and go through this huge thing and somebody shows back up Don Corneo and uh, he tries to marry uh, Yuffie who's uh, underage is even creepier yeah uh, and so I don't know how that's going to be done in the oh episode, yeah it's going to be super interesting yeah but in this one she shows up to Midgar and she's like hey I'm undercover with the Wutai government I gotta find secrets on so, Shinra so, yeah so a little bit of history super, super secret special material apparently they've been working on apparently yeah uh, alleg- allegedly alleg- allegedly uh, so a little bit of backstory uh, Wutai and, and Midgar they went to oh, war yeah. with each other, or Shinra, I should say Shinra. Shinra, yeah. Shinra and Wutai went to war, and, you know, they lost, and it's kind of a sore subject to a lot of them, mm-hmm. and some of that goes down in Crisis Core, which is the game where you play as Zack, mm-hmm. uh, but Yuffie is the daughter of, basically, the head dude of Wutai. Yeah, they, I don't, I didn't know that, but and, they mentioned it. And Sonan, in this, in this yeah, game. Sonan mentions, hey, I, I trained under your He's dad. Apprentice, you know? yeah. And she, she kind of has a lot of disdain towards him, because right. he treated her like crap, but it's because, you know, his legacy fell, and that all gets rectified in that Wu Tai storyline later. That's cool. Good. That you, uh, well, I, hopefully, we'll come I won't back spoil. To this. I won't spoil too much of it. Mm. Sorry, I got to drink a lot of water, man. It's, it's, been <laughs> it's, it's all right. You're in Final Fantasy. Yeah. Lore mode. Um, Go with it. But yeah, so Sonon is there, and he's like, "Hey." Uh, she meets up with Sonon, and like we gotta find this material. And you meet up with like this kind of Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell of uh, Avalanche, Avalanche. Yeah. and it's like these new guys, kind of kind of forgettable characters, yeah, like Billy Bob, who yeah. looks like Axl Rose, and right. <laughs> uh, this other guy who teaches you how to play Fort Condor, yeah, and the uh, probably the most important one is GJ. Yeah, or, I don't know if I'm saying that right, GJ. That sounds um, right. Yeah. But basically, he's like, hey, I, I got to wait for you to get in the Shinra building. And then you kind of go on this wild goose chase uh, to find him. You go into like the maintenance tunnels mm-hmm. of the lower plate and you fight the big centipede monster. Yeah. And then eventually he kind of like, you catch up with him. He's like, here you go. Here's your passes. You can get on up to the. Yeah, your um, fast pass or whatever it is. Yeah, your you're, you're fast, you're Disney fast pass, mm-hmm. your Shinra pass. Yeah. Uh, Shinra fast pass. And then that's when you go to the. Shinra Tower. Which is the majority it's a of the short. Game. The main story is kind of short. Like if you mm-hmm. skipped all that Condor stuff, you could probably do it in like three hours. Yeah, that, or so. yeah. The slums is very quick. Yeah, and um, they start you off at like level 30, 40 25. something. Twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I mean, and you level up quite fast. Yeah, it's fast. It, it, I mean that the system in between. Um, I mean, because it's a shorter DLC, yeah. they want you to level up they quicker. Because I mean, it got established so, somewhat. You could finish Final Fantasy VII Remake Original. Um, and still not be at 50. No, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. this one, it's like, I was 50 pretty much when I got to the end right there. Yeah. Or I'd say... I'm not... Cl- I'd say, I'm I'd say when I got halfway through the hard mode uh, playthrough, because it carries yeah. over your stats. Right. Uh, but you go to the Shinra building, and um, you're, you're trying to find that secret material. And that's, you get a lot more interaction with Scarlet here. I was going to say, Scarlet's kind of the main focus on this one. Oh, dude, I hate Scarlet so much. Yeah. And I can't tell you why, because okay. of one super cool detail. I want to tell you so bad. Ah, don't. I want to tell you so bad. Don't, don't. But if I'm it's not that good, to. then don't. But, um... Like, she's the reason for something that you probably want to know the answer to, but I can't tell you. Anyway. Uh, now you shouldn't have said anything, because now I'm like, it's oh. a, you can play the original. I'm just kidding. No, no. I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, no, I couldn't do that. Um, uh, but, no, you get to see a lot more of her, and you, yeah. and you start to realize, if you don't know this already from the original like I do, uh, she's a piece of crap. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's a weapon developer, but she is shady. She's all about dropping that plate. She wants to kill everybody. Yeah, and, um, and just so nonchalant, happy, smirky about it. Like, just a Karen Oh, she's like, she's like, oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna kill about, yeah. you know, uh, one-eighth of the population. I don't want to drop it in the slums. Are... Whatever's on top of it, yeah, it's all gonna die. Yeah, 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 screw everyone else. Smirk, yeah. smirk, haha. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my... by the way, your friend's in trouble. Yeah. I called somebody on my, my pantyhose garter thing. Right, oh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then, so this is probably one of my complaints story-wise, okay. is that all this deep ground stuff, the deep ground soldiers, and that scary mm. dude Nero. Yeah, Nero. Nero. That's all from Dirge, Dirge of Cerberus. That's, is Weiss part of it too? That's yes, his brother? Yes, yes. No. I didn't go back and play him. That's all... <laughs> <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> Nero, Nero gave me some trouble. Are you talking about going to fight Weiss? Yeah. 
No. I, I, I ain't beat him yet, and I don't know if I want to. Uh, it is really. It is the hardest challenge. It, that's not even on Yuffie. That's back on the yeah, original. Well, that's the thing is I didn't I didn't download my Ooh. uh my old save. I didn't Ooh. go back and download Dude, it. Dude, it's so. it's rough. Yeah. Well, I'm glad rough. you said something because I'm not doing it now. <laughs> rough. <laughs> if you haven't finished, like if you're not level fifty and, and unlocked, you need to be at the point that I'm at. You need a platinum seven remake mm-hmm. just before, to play wise. No, screw that. To be ready for him. No, screw that. It's hard. Yeah. It's so hard. Well, Nero gave me trouble. I, yeah, I got a few times. Nero's tough, um, but yeah, I, this is the, like I was saying, I kind of complaining because okay, yeah, yeah. Deep Ground was Dirge of Cerberus. I enjoyed because it was Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. It's not that good of a game. It's okay. a kind of a rip off. Devil May Cry. Okay. Story wise, they go full board Kingdom Hearts stupid on it. Like yeah, I can tell this is definitely out of. It's a little strange. Like by the end of Dirge of Cerberus, spoiler alert. You I mean you play as Vincent Valentine, okay. and you're, it's a it's like a shooting game. Okay. Uh, by the end of it, um, it's, 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 we're gonna what? we're gonna talk about it later. So, Vincent Valentine's final limit break is called Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk about it later. We're gonna talk about it later. <laughs> <I'm not saying. laughs> it's called Chaos, and Chaos is basically this chaos. um this element, this intangible force in okay. Final Fantasy VII's lore. Apparently, sure. And we didn't learn about it until... And there's this very special proto-materia that was made, and Vincent got experimented on okay. by Hojo to be this transforming monster that you know could take on all this stuff and be mm-hmm. a burden of his experiments. And Lucrecia, who was Sephiroth's biological mother, uh, she was Vincent's love interest. She puts the proto-materia in him to keep him alive so he can control the transformations. She doesn't realize that that's the only way to control chaos. And so by the end of Dirge of Cerberus, Vincent Valentine is the most powerful thing that exists in Final Fantasy VII lore, period. I got that Drew Scanlon face right now. The blinking guy. Because you're mm. fighting Omega Weapon mm. and you're in the air. He's flying around. He looks like this Tim Burton, like, crazy creature. Like, he's shooting this. He's got this gun that shoots energy balls. And it's nuts. Okay? <laughs> it is nuts. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, the reason I say all that is, I think it's a little dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like I like it. I like that Vincent Valentine got all this attention in Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah. I, I love Vincent Valentine. He's one of my favorite it characters. It kind of feels like it jumps that Universal Shark. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so when I saw this deep ground stuff, all that to say, when I saw this stuff, I kind of uh, rolled my eyes. I yeah, was like, okay. Uh, but I think they, they tastefully implemented it where yeah. I wasn't getting... But like by the time you fight Nero, you're like, what is this? Yeah. Who is this guy? What's with the mouth thing? Right. What's with the, the bandage lord? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is that is what Dirge of Cerberus is, is edgelord the game. <laughs> like, yeah. Weiss looks like an edgelord. Nero looks like an Omega-level yeah, yeah. uh, edgelord. Apparently he's not dead. But yeah, yeah well, he's he's like this undying creature. I don't yeah. have, it's a whole right. story. Dark, we could do a whole darkness, podcast Darkness, chaos, on it. blackness. I'll, all I'll say is Kingdom Hearts 1 and I think maybe 2 was out by now, and Tetsuo Nomura was just kind of doing whatever the heck he wanted. He was going full, he was, he was going full Kojima. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was okay. going full Kojima yeah. with it. Um, he kojima it. But they wanted to give Vincent Valentine... Uh, some love. Some love, because he had even less significance than Yuffie than did. Yuffie and, did. Yeah, sure. so that's, that's why Dirge of Cerberus existed. Uh, but anyway, you go through all this stuff, and you fight Nero, mm-hmm. and you fight the Deep Ground people, and... Unfortunately, you find out a little bit earlier that Sonon lost a little sister yeah. in the war, yeah. and uh, Scarlet is responsible, and so he he kind of secretly thinks of Yuffie it's as kind of like as, that, as that Joel, Joel to uh, yeah, to uh, kind of being her big brother, right? Yeah, but not and father daughter. But he's big literally her her um, um, subordinate, right? Oh, not right. subordinate. Like, no, uh, I would say that bo- you know, boss. She, like yeah, she, 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 he takes orders from her. Yeah, right. And so he's essentially he's more mature. Yeah, he's but he wants to protect guard. her. But she's like, no, I don't need. You. I'm not your sister. And don't they are me. they are the yin and yang to each other. Yeah. She is she is skillful, but she's she's immature. Super, she's sixteen. She, yeah, yeah. She's she's stubborn. She's headstrong. Mm-hmm. She's stupid. She makes dumb mistakes. Yeah. and that's why I hated her in seven. Right. Were, I did, I never liked her in seven. Yeah. Even after the whole storyline with her, I never really cared for her that much. And that changed after this game. Yeah. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but Sonon thinks of her this way as a big brother, and then he pretty much sacrifices himself and yep. gets stabbed, and he kind of sees. He sees visions of his sister, sister so you know right. he, he's he's gone. He's, yeah. he's dead. Yeah. And I kind of in the back of my head, I was like, 
Ken Song guy's all right. And then yeah. as the game went on, I really grew. He really grew yeah, on me. Absolutely. And um, I was like, man, I really hope nothing bad happens. But I knew, as someone who has played Final Fantasy original, I yeah. was like, he doesn't exist. Yeah, past he's not. This. He's not in this world. So either he goes off somewhere else, or he is going to bite yeah. it. Yeah. And they do it in a tasteful way. Yeah. And it's it's a really good story. And, you it's, know. And by the end of it, you know, you don't beat you 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 complete the fight with Nero, but you don't kill him. You don't kill him, yeah. Because that Vincent Valentine gets to kill him later. Well, it, assuming assuming yeah. we well, we don't know how the story's gonna go after this. Right, yeah. But um, yeah, Yuffie runs out of the he's building running, crying. She's, she's mad running. at him because he yeah yeah she's mad. I don't need you to take care of me. She got but... the blood on her face, mm-hmm. and then the pillar drops in front of she her. She sees it, yeah. And she kind of drops, which her is nails. crazy because we, we don't see we didn't see the pillar drop from the top. And then you realize, like you think about the slums mm-hmm. in 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 the when the when the, when the pillar drops, but then you look and you're like that was a city. Oh, the city. There's people on top. There's yeah. people on bottom. Yeah, yeah. It was. And then you just realize bad. the magnitude of. I mean, and it she shows its face at, at every turn. Yeah, she sees that happen firsthand, right. and it's so wild because it fits perfect. They're so able to, to write it into the story. Yeah. Because at this point, Cloud is off with uh, Aerith. Um, and Tifa's on her way to Wall Market, and we never saw any of this in the original. Yeah. So it's fun to see how all that happened. Like, remember the the Corneo guys show up earlier, and they're like, "Hey, we got this right. new girl. We're gonna take you to Corneo." And then they're like, "Oh wait, we got this new chick. You know, we gotta go get her." And it's Tifa, and you like you get to feel all that that extra. Why couldn't we see Barrett sliding on that new cable while the whole thing's falling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got that long zip line. And so it, it's perfect because you're able to. To inject Yuffie into this world, yes. in places that Cloud is running around in, yeah. and it, it makes sense that they never cross paths with any of the main characters. It's funny because when for someone from for going back to me as in a person that does not have the nostalgia that you guys have for Final Fantasy, it was refreshing. Like I was like, Biggs and Wedge and Jesse, look, hey, they're oh, oh they're not dead yet, but maybe, <laughs> but, uh, we but don't they're know. here. We don't know. We <laughs> really don't know. <laughs> yeah. But it was refreshing to see. And then, so speaking of refreshing to see, at the end, Chris. Oh, the extra scene. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we, we get this cute scene of the gang after the Walking events away of, from Midgar. After the events of Remake, it's Cloud and the gang. Seen and them in that PlayStation 5 re-rendered. Ooh, oh, my gosh. Barrett's just here at Manly. <laughs> ah, anyways. Oh, man. Barrett's so great. Anyway, yes. they're walking down, like, the Wasteland sure. Road. And the reason it's so wasteland is because Shinra's been draining Midgar the world. Midgar sucked the life out of it, so there's no trees. It's just right. kind of dust and dirt and they're walking and uh they're hitchhiking they're trying to get to calm and i just love the character interaction i could just sit there and watch it all day oh yeah absolutely you know and this this chocobo truck chocobo about, joe it's chocobo bill oh bill no, he's chocobo joe chocobo bill is a character you use as one of those things I was like, oh my gosh chocobo bill because he's in the chocobo farm that you okay. you can go to optionally to get a chocobo, Who's chocobo joe is joe the guy that was in the- uh yeah he's the other guy in the walmart okay yeah. that's what i thought and so he's so he's on the way to the chocobo farm yeah. and on the way is calm and he drops him off and you know, Aerith is like, man, my stomach is in knots. I don't know what's is up. Is that the big castle they stop at? When yeah, it's in? like a weird looking town. Yeah. And um, yeah, Barrett's like, yes, you know, I love, I love how perfectly they capture it because it's like this in the original. Barrett, he's like, I'm the leader. Clearly, I'm the leader. Everybody <laughs> listen to me. And it's like yeah. that in the beginning as yeah. well. And so he's like, oh, come on, let's go get something to eat. Right. And then it kind of like fades off, and they start walking towards calm. And so it's good to know that's where the next part's going to start. Yes. But then we see. Okay. This weird, yeah. it picks up that alternate timeline Zach yeah. that didn't die when he was supposed to at the church. Right, this is where it's confusing me so much. I'm going to hit you with a theory. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is happening at the same time. Because he walks in, he's like practicing his speech. Because he, he, yeah, he, he hasn't seen Aerith in a long, long time. time yeah. And so he opens up the church door. As much. And he's like, Aerith? And there's like a bunch of kids in there and they're crying. All the flowers are dying. Theory. Okay. At this point, Aerith has already died. And so they're all crying because everything in the church is falling apart because Aerith is not there to take care of everything. Okay, okay. That's my theory. Okay. And then he's going to be pissed and he's going to be like, I gotta, oh, go after, I gotta go after Sephiroth. And then he's going to find his way to find the party somehow because maybe it's a timeline convergence. Yeah. And then we'll see this really cool, like, Cloud and Zack fighting together thing, but... It but how does it how does it take away from Cloud and his memories and maybe at the point, consciousness? Maybe at the point that Zack meets Cloud, he will already have gone through his complete story arc. Because yeah. later in the game, he falls on the live stream, has Michael poisoning, doesn't remember anything, right. then he finds out who he really is. Who am I? Who, yeah. Is, yeah. And so uh, maybe all that happens, and then he meets. He's like, "Oh, okay, 
you're still alive. So this is maybe the but, future? But here's the thing. If that's a theory. Here's the thing. Because I was thinking, sorry, I was thinking it was just now, and he's behind everything. The, the plate's maybe, already dropped, and that's all refugees or, from the, from the or, slums. Or maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. He's, he's, like, he's like coming up like, whoa, where's Aerith? What the heck? Because yeah, Aerith's gone. We don't know. Because the, she's on the way to... We have no, we have no answers. <sighs> and this is really interesting because it yeah. kind of it kind of lights an extra fuel for it for us people who already know what's going to happen in the story sure. as something else to look forward to oh absolutely and for you guys yeah. or maybe it's just a complete alternate timeline where you get to play Zach instead of Cloud in some of these iconic locations mm-hmm. um, but that being said I do have to get it off my chest okay that Zach's death is so integral to the story yeah I think you mentioned this of, of Cloud and Final Fantasy 7 and it's set literally the part where where Zach dies mm-hmm. spoiler alert yeah, yeah. for a very old game bad for badly he he dies and he, he he's he's laying there like shot to death by Shinra. Yeah. He gives he holds up the sword and he says, "You're, You're my living, living legacy." legacy. Yeah. And Cloud's just kind of like, "Oh crap! I remember everything now." And that's whenever he's so damaged, his brain's so damaged, he takes all those pieces of Zack's memory and fills it in. And all of a sudden, he's he's Mister Mercenary. He's Mister First Class. Yeah. That's not true. And then literally, he puts the sword over his back, goes into Midgar, gets his first job with Avalanche right. as a mercenary. Boom! You're in the beginning of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So if he's alive, yeah, right. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, if if Zach is just gonna get up and walk, like, all right, because he says it in the end, he's like, "Hey, Cloud, you see all that?" So if he's just walking up to the church, where's broken, damaged Cloud at? Right. So yeah, I need answers. Yeah, no, I need I, answers. I, I'm with you because y'all again, y'all have vicariously through through discussions on these podcasts and, and our ch- our chats I've learned enough about this to know about these things I'm like well, wait a minute so like because Cloud's already a, a first class soldier right so then how did he get that if yeah I don't know if you get into you know, the see you're, th- you're on the right track yeah. you're absolutely on the right track and so you're 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 right dude welcome <laughs> w- welcome to the welcome. Final Fantasy 7 train yeah alright we're going to the Mako reactor let's do it we're, let's, we're gonna go um so I, I, yeah, deaf wholeheartedly. So what I did is I took my game list, and we're going to go back and draw the episode back as a, as, a, as a whole episode, and I gave some little mini ratings for some that I deserved ratings. That, this is easily a 4 out of 5 for me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, of course, I'm going to, I'll give it a 5 out of 5 because I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And I played, I played it again on yeah. hard mode. I, I redid all the Condor battles in hard mm-hmm. mode. I'm going to beat Weiss at some yeah. point. It's a 9 out of 10 if we're going to do that scale. Just, uh, and all, my only, my only not perfect score is just because I won more. It was absolutely, yeah. And for a DLC. It's, no, for a DLC, it was great. It, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I, just, I agree. I wanted more. I just wanted, um, I figured we would go to at least the other areas, uh, like Sector 5, where Aerith oh, yeah. lives yeah, and all yeah, that. that's true. Uh, but... Yeah, I think if you if you just mainline this, you you'd be kind of upset, right? Uh, but no, I really I really enjoyed it. And by the way, we see Yuffie on the Chocobo. Like, oh talk, yeah, she's talking about like oh, Yuffie wants you for her team, right. which makes sense. So she's of course going to run into Runs the gang, down. and yeah. she's she's going to realize that they're the Avalanche people. Uh, just just Final Fantasy. Uh, this is the thing I appreciate about the universe. Even back then, watching my friend play on a one, and then when he would play the cutscenes, I'd roll my eyes like, okay, I'm gonna look at something else. Anime but bull when, crap. <laughs> yeah, but when they, w- not the cutscenes, excuse me, the gameplay. But when the cutscenes were coming out, I always have, I'd always be focused because the cutscenes are always good. Look, this is gonna sound silly, but just their attention to detail, just seeing the wrinkles in the face when they zoom in. There's a scene where the very slight smile on yeah, Cloud's on face. Cloud's face. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, in that, in that scene. Like, oh my gosh, he kind of smiled. Uh, but like, Yuffie just like slumps over and like her belly, because she's got a real, she's a she's, thick scene and she's real thin, but her, you know, when, when a human folds skin over. Skin wrinkles. Yeah, and... belly folds. I was like, look at that. Like, I just like, just the, 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 the look of this The game. animations and slow motion, I the textures. so excited for what is to come. And to play it on, on the PS5 as well. Because yeah, they have their engine. They just oh, gotta yeah. put the story together. Oh man, they don't have to change a thing. No. They can just leave it exactly how it yeah. is. But, uh, man. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. I, re- I really enjoyed it. Oh. oh. I mean, that took 30 minutes just yeah. to talk about that. Uh, can I, let me run through some quick ones then. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah I'll, I'll blow through some of mine because, yeah, we can tag some of these quickly, actually. Okay. Uh, I played Wreckfest. Oh. I played Wreckfest. Okay. It was yeah. a free game on PS5. Yeah. And, uh, PS Plus. You know, if you like Demolition Derby games, mm-hmm. this is nothing but that. It has, like, a... like. Your basic like figure eight races. Yeah. It has you know you can soup up your car. It has like you know dynamic damage and 
Uh, it has goofy things too, like lawnmower, bumper cars, right. or and it gets even more goofy because as, as you unlock stuff, you can go do custom events. Like you mm-hmm. can, I want to be in a school bus and I want to chase down lawnmowers and stuff. Yeah. Um, the only thing bad about it, uh, it, it, if it's not your cup of tea, like if you don't just absolutely love Destruction Derby, it, it can get kind of boring. Repetitive. Yeah. yeah. The licensed music is not very good. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like your typical alternative kind of like rock music. Can you take? Um, but was yeah, no, that might be an improvement. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but it um it was really interesting because like the the this is for five this for five, five yeah. Okay, you the, did the adaptive triggers are cool because as you're driving the car, you're getting damage if your gearbox gets destroyed mm-hmm. or your right wheel or your you your brakes. That? It adjusts how it plays Ooh, with the triggers. Okay, that that would be interesting so, enough just to play. Yeah, that's really that fun. Reason. And and so yeah, if you're just looking for some PS five fuel you just want to sure. you know, something to it was free right and, and it was really fun i actually really enjoyed it a lot um i mean i played it because i mean i didn't have much else to play but i enjoyed it i would pop it in do a couple events and yeah. uh, i mean it has multiplayer if you know that thing and that kind of thing and you know it like i said ps5 fuel just it was a good adaptive trigger like what can a racing yeah what game can we do? yeah yeah because I've, I've played a platformer i've played shooters with the uh the yeah sure I'm like, i've played a racing game with the but adaptive. playing a racing game, it, it's yeah. fun to see like like it's so interesting because like when it's damaged you have to pull so much harder Gosh, what to of accelerate look like Ooh, who knows uh, but that's all i really have to say about okay. it okay uh another quick one i think we can talk about is um, Knockout City? Okay, Knockout City. It's right here next. Dodgeball game? Yeah. Uh, so this came. This kind of came out of nowhere. Wait, it showed up at uh, not at E3. Where did it show up? At? Oh, it Nintendo up, Direct. It did. That's yeah, right. yeah. And I remember seeing it. And be like, I don't want to yeah, play this game. Yeah. Wait, didn't it have a really bad commercial? No, no. Was it the one the bad commercial? One, one, one. It was on a direct, and it was on some other, some other something. And then when the, some other something showcased it again, like, oh, okay, well, this is not. I too feel bad. like on the on the Nintendo Direct, I remember it having a bad, it might have, a it bad might reveal. Yeah. And then later, I was like, man, I really want to play this game. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, man, it, 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 been, it, it basically been, looks like Fortnite meets Splatoon. So the animation, the the, the art style, yes, yeah, yeah it's art, got that. art style looks like Fortnite. The the like animations and environments look like actually, it looks like Overwatch. Okay. A little bit of Splatoon. Yeah. And a little bit of like uh, Fortnite. Fortnite in yeah. there. It's kind of got the chunky, cartoony graphics. Mm-hmm. It kind of has like the the character animations yeah. and environments of Overwatch, and it kind of has the colors and uh, kind of kid friendly yeah. uh, presentation of Splatoon. Yes, 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 yeah. It, and a the, lot of customization and, and the heavy, you know, three v three team based gameplay yeah. of like a, a more focused game like Splatoon. Well, they, well the cool thing they, they bring about is the different balls. The different balls. It's dodgeball. It's dodgeball, right? Yes. Yeah, and so, like, it's not just a shooter where you're just throwing balls, throwing balls. You have there's there's a there's a right trigger throw and then there's a catch. Yeah, there's a you can charge it and throw. Mm-hmm. You can fake pump and throw. Mm-hmm. You can spin and throw a, a, a hook shot or a lob. You can up lob arc. it up. Mm-hmm. You can catch the ball. And if you do a perfect catch, catch. It char- it's a charge. It can charge up. It can charge up to six times. It's, it's yeah, you just both insta catch back and forth. And you can only charge with a regular. If you're just holding a ball, you can only charge up to like three times speed. Right. If you catch a ball perfect and I throw it at you, or I, yeah, I, th- I catch it, I throw it at you, you catch it, you throw it at me. And once it gets that six charge, the more it's charge up, the it's faster. Wow. It, it, yeah, it flies fast. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed that helped me play a lot is like the overlay, like seeing the red. Yeah, around the screen, screen and seeing the white that indicates that's where the ball's coming from. Yeah. It really helped me to be able to like. Turn around and catch, catch it, it and, yeah. and kind of be uh, preemptive. Like, because I was playing it before, I was like, "How are these people catching these balls?" I don't understand. Yeah, that's what's driving me nuts. And then once I kind of figured it out, I was like, "I get it." I wasn't paying attention to the overlay because I would see the red. I'd be like, "Okay, someone's looking at me." I would never pay attention to that white or the sounds. And yeah. I was using that good headset. And once I started to hear it, I was able to start like actually playing really good defense. Yeah. Um, I just, I would just, I just, I get flustered a little bit, and I well, yeah, fumble my. It's, yeah, it's it's hard. It, it's 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 one of those games. It's it's easy to play, tough to master. So that's what I, I wanted. That's that gonna be my only, um, not pro con. God, I can't see out con. No, it's it's one of those niche multiplayer competitive yeah. games. So it's one of those things where we all first get it. It was like this is pretty fun. And it got popular. And it got minute. popular. And then we put it down for a little bit. We came back like, uh oh. It's one of those things where it's you better play consistently. A community, the, the try hard community is going to yeah. The community can make a difference. And we got matched. We can get matched up with people that will just smoke yeah. us. And they're just like, unfortunately, this isn't like I'm not the, the kind of game player um, that just plays one game. Yeah, I play a lot. Of, clearly, right. I play a lot of different yeah, games. Yeah, right. Me too. Um, but I mean, it's still fun when we play it. It is. I enjoy it. I can I can hop in 
for like five rounds. It's fun to play. The, the uh, we didn't speak about this. The um, the uh, the hub world, the little hangout. Yeah, the little hangout. It's pretty fun to go. You we, can we literally sit here and talk about video games while we're throwing balls at each other, knocking each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, we're just talking. Yeah, stupid. Right, we're just chit chatting. So, like and, that's fun enough. Yeah. Hey, look at me. I'm flying on the moon. Yeah. Ball. yeah. Um, I think the customization options yeah, are bad. they're they're very um, varied. They are yes. they are, they are we'll very diverse. Yeah. Sure. You can do a lot. I mean, it, it, it does not hold back on what no. you can do. Uh-huh. We've seen some creatures out there. <laughs> Jump we've, out of that taxi. Yes, we've seen some, some what, abominations. What are you? Yeah, we've seen just regular looking people. We've seen yeah. it. It's... It's you wild, could, but it's so whatever. cool. They do give you a lot of options, right? Yeah, yeah. And the Battle Pass is free. There is some paid currency. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can pay. You yeah. can pay um, to get, like, but it's But it's not gross. No, no. no I mean, I think we paid $20 for it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I but I'm like, saying, like, the, a lot of times, even those cheap games, live as a service game, competitive especially, can be gross with their microtransactions. Yeah, and, it, and it's strictly cosmetics. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yeah. You're not going to pay to get, like, a Uber ball. But, you know. Right, 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 right. Uh, but I think, like you mentioned earlier... Not only do you have like your standard dodgeball, but you've got like the cage ball yeah. that you throw it and turn someone into a ball. Yeah, you get throw them off a building. Yeah, you get throw them off a building or throw them at their friends. Or you get the moon ball that makes you levitate a little bit when you jump, mm-hmm. and if you hit someone, it sends them way back. I like the meteor ball, which is a time bomb essentially. Uh, the, yeah, time I love bomb that's my that favorite. ticks. Um, and then the sniper ball that's like a football that you mm-hmm. can. Oh, that cow! That, yeah, that, 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 that sound <laughs> of the rifle. And you gotta ball. charge and hold it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really enjoy what it does with team based gameplay. Yeah. Uh, I like that you can actually Passing is a, yeah, is you a can actually thing. roll up into a ball yourself and someone can use you so if you don't have any balls around to throw you can use yourself as a weapon yeah. you just gotta coordinate your friend launch yeah. me but you gotta be careful because yeah. if, if they throw they can catch it right back and throw and it back throw, yeah. and if you get hit while you're in a ball so we didn't say this you have two hit points right. each ball hit costs one, one you heart health, health points uh, but health. if you get hit as someone in a roll of ball it's a one shot Yeah. Uh, so you gotta be careful with that and if you charge it up you can turn like a nuke drop right. like a mega bomb that you know, a, covers a radius it's, a K, it's an instant KO. Instant KO. radius. And it's like a... Yeah. Type effect. Um, and, I mean... The maps are cool. The like, maps are really fun. Also, like you mentioned, you can toss back and forth. And as you pass the ball, you it charge will, the ball it'll up charge it up with speed. Which is a smart thing to do because we, we didn't say this, but when you're charging, you, you, you're slow. So yeah. you can run as fast as you want to run and sprint with the ball, but as soon as you start charging, you're in walk mode. Yeah, yeah. And you're kind of a sitting target. So it's easy. It's just if you want to run as a group, yeah. which is what I like And if I have a ball in my hands, it'll bounce right back to you, charge it up. Yes. It's so it's, it's, constantly it's beneficial to just kind of. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. I, I, again, my, my biggest thing, I think, the last couple of times we play is we just get smashed because we haven't been consistent with oh, it. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, that's any game. It's any like, game. Any popular I, I, that's, game. I guess that's not to any to the to Dodgeball City's fault. It's just in that kind of genre. You know, it's kind of like if we do Rocket League, then we don't play Rocket League for a year. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, don't I know, feel man. like we I played, can jump I, into Rocket League and be okay. Yeah, well, we've, we've been playing it since 2015. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I played I played Rocket League the other night. Yeah. And I just was not feeling it. Really? I don't know why. Rainbow Six Siege comes to mind all the time. It was me and Seth jump on that game like, this game's amazing. I think we were really good. And then the tryouts got in and we're like, I don't like this game. I think it was the, the nasty microtransaction stuff. Yeah. Oh, with Rocket League. I, with the Fast and Furious stuff. I was uh, like, man, I bought this for $3. Uh, they got bought by Epic. That's what happened. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> but yeah, right. do, do, uh, Knockout City, that's definitely, it's definitely a 4 out of 5 for me. I would say if we're going to go on a 10 scale, I'm going to give it a 10, a 7 out of 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, not great, 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 but it's it's fun. It's 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. And if you got three other friends, I, think I don't know if it'd be any good with randos because there's a little bit of strategy. Oh yeah, you want to play? There. You want to play with your friends? You yeah. definitely want to play with your friends. But, uh, yeah. Um, no, I like it. I, I didn't say same. I give it like a seven out of ten. It's yeah. like a good multiplayer game. I like it because it's not a shooter. It's not. Yes. It's, it's different. Not, it's, it's just yeah. It's unique. Mm-hmm. That's why I really. I, I, who doesn't like dodgeball? Oh, absolutely. I love dodgeball. Yeah. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. There it is. Uh, Kazuya came out. For Super Smash Brothers, well, I didn't. I, I bought them. I didn't play them. <laughs> uh, man, so Kazuya from Tekken yeah. was announced. We talked about it from E3. Uh, they showcased him. Uh, uh, Kazuya from Tekken is pretty much the protagonist uh, of the series of, essentially. of Tekken One and Two. Mm-hmm. Or he, he's not. A, he's not a good guy. Yeah, he's not. A, he's he's just kind of like he does what he wants, right? Mm-hmm. And he's a good guy in the first game. Turns into a bad guy. You know, it, he has no. Like, he's sometimes the antagonist, sometimes the protagonist. Gotcha. He's not really like your Liu Kang, who's always good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least an back alternate, in the day. Alternate, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so, um, Kazuya plays like you're playing a Tekken game. And that's what I really love about these new characters that come out in Smash. You know, a lot of people are kind of like, you know, it takes a lot for... 
to surprise people these days on these crossover characters. Because after yeah. Banjo and after uh, Persona's Joker yeah, Sephiroth. and uh, Sephiroth, yeah, yeah after or just Cloud in general, yeah, 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 a lot. After all these big reveals, you know, it's like, yeah, I even said it on the E3 episode. I was like, you know, I was kind of expecting Kazuya earlier. You know, I, I, sure. I, I figured they would have dropped him sooner than this because yeah. we've got Tekken Mii Fighter costumes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, his level is the Mishima Family Dojo. There's a lot of history there. Um, it's a really good level. I like the level. It's kind of like a mix in between um, the King of Fighters stage with the destructible environments and Luigi's Mansion and how it kind of rebuilds. Um, okay, yeah, I haven't played the stage. And, and it has kind of like closed in... Uh, Okay, blast, so blast, blast zones. Yeah. So it's not like your standard Omega form where like it's a uniform blast right. zone. It's like it's a little bit more hugged up on the corners. Yeah. So you, it's kind of emulating a Tekken stage. You don't want to get like ringed out essentially. You yeah. Wanna, you want to stay there. Um, and a dude, Kazuya is. I don't want to say he's broken, but holy crap. Yeah, he looks pretty powerful. He is good. Like. Yeah. All and not his, like slow powerful either. He's got. He's got. He's got pros and he's got cons. Yeah, it, it's not easy to see him at first, but one because me and Seth we were kind of workshopping them, and we were just doing Kazuya on Kazuya battles. You can't see the cons there because we're both playing as him. Mm-hmm. But once I started playing as a faster character or a character that has more projectiles or you know someone who has more cross ups that's not the same as Kazuya, you start to find out he's a little slower in the air. Mm-hmm. You find out his recovery is decent, but it it doesn't have a lot of utility, right? Mm-hmm. Like his side B is not going to get you very far, and it leaves you kind of wide open. He's kind of slower when he gets launched, right? Um, so your aerial defenses are kind of tougher okay. with him. Um, but other than that, he has a shield break. He has a reflect. Yeah. He has a uh, 100% boost whenever he gets... Uh, 100% he gets what's called a uh, rage drive. Is that where he's like red glowing? He kind of glows red, How's yeah. that? How's that charge? Once you hit 100%, you just get it, and you can cash it out, right? It's not like... Terry Bogards, but once you get it, you have it until you die. Once you use it, it's gone. And you talking about 100% damage or just charge up over 100%, 100% damage. Okay, thank you. And, and once you get it, you can use his down B or just do a regular grab. The down B is a command grab that slams slams on the ground like a little devil face slam, mm-hmm. and you get a unique, more powerful version of that once that rage meter is full. Okay. Um, he has a 10 string combo that yeah, is just it's pretty disgusting. A press and hold. Now you can get out of it. We're still kind of experimenting yeah. on, on ways to get out. Uh, but it's punishable because once you do it, you're kind of committed. Yeah. And if you if you're just kind of swinging out of, you can cancel it, but yeah. you got to commit to some of those combos. And that's the thing is his animations. Tekken is known for having really in depth animations, and so whenever he's committed to those animations, you that's his open spot. Yeah. And so when, if he's committed to that, you can just kind of punish it really easily. Um, he's got his projectile. He has um, a taunt that does damage. That's insane. Uh, yeah, the most damage output taunt that exists. It's a little four hit combo. I mean, it's hard to hit, but right. it's there. Uh, he has a kind of a doo doo jump. His first yeah, I've noticed his first that. jump is kind of doo doo because it's emulating that that hop yeah. of a uh, Tekken character. But his second jump makes up for it because it kind of it kind of swoops up. Yeah. So it kind of goes whoop, like uh, it's almost like a flap of a wing. Yeah. And then his up B, it has. Like, his third jump, it has damage, but it's only overhead, right? Okay. So you can't, you know, it, recovering, it's going to be kind of kind of chaotic with him, especially okay. if there's another one. But, man, he's got uh, a spike that's just his neutral air. Literally, you just jump and tap the A button, it goes, and it just shoots you straight down. I saw somebody react to somebody, yeah. Uh, I found out that if you grab someone at the ledge that has, like, a decent amount of percentage, and you do a down throw... It will down throw him. It'll bounce him up, and if you if you counteract with his uh, his down smash right after, you can spike him straight down and kill him. Like, yeah. Just did, you, did that happen to somebody? Somebody got spiked. Yeah, hard yeah, somewhere. yeah. I mean, we all do. And then from from Kai, if you're good enough, you can zero to death in three hits. That's gross. Yeah, and, but, but you, you got to connect them. You gotta, yeah, right. There are sweet spots. Don't yeah. don't let me get uh, don't let me get too far on myself. There are sweet spots, but. He's good. He's got that. He's got that <laughs> fighting game character where he's always facing. If it's a one on one, he's always yeah, facing. Yeah, he's always trying to look at Terry. He's got some inputs where like, he's got one where it's called Tombstone Smasher or Tombstone Cutter. I can't remember. And it's if you're already ducking and you do down diagonal forward, uh, and you hit A, he'll do like this kind of forward roll, and it has an invincibility frame, which means that if you're playing as Charizard, you do that fire dash thing. Mm-hmm. You can do that roll and hit before, but that it will always beat that. 
Yeah. Because you're invincible on it. Yeah, it's an yeah. iframe. Right, and he's got a he's got a move where he does like a backwards dash kick, and his leg kind of sticks out further, but that leg has no collision. Okay. So he has all these like moves with super unique properties, but you gotta remember them all. Right. And you gotta input them all. So if you know what you're doing and you're calm and you don't rush it, you could be a monster with this guy. Yeah. Okay. And, his, and his final smash is really cool because he yeah he turns into Satan essentially. Yeah. He turns well he utilizes the devil gene that he has. Right. If you know if you played Tekken you know what I'm talking about and he shoots laser beams out of all of his wings. All of it yeah it just shoots it everywhere. It's a really good. It's a good. It's a pretty good. It's smash. hard to connect or, uh, it. Ultimate. It's hard to connect it because it's it's you can duck it like certain characters are so you can adjust his projectile. And yeah, it kind of right. comes out slow, so it's easy to predict. So if you have a character with a reflector, you're kind of screwed there. But you can shoot it kind of down at an angle and kind of up at an angle. Yeah. And it, it goes very far. Yeah, it does. And uh, the Final Smash Collision is the same thing. It's just that beam that goes straight ahead. It has a lot of reach, but you can dodge it pretty easily if yeah. you're doing uh, but other than that, I'm excited to jump in and play some Smash. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little minute since we we, we played it. and We were having a blast. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I think you'll like him. You just gotta be patient with him, man. Sure. You, you gotta put in some practice with him. Okay. Because that that was the only thing I, I was worried about. When I saw. I was like, I was you like, saw that list of me. moves. I, like, yeah. I sent that list of moves. I was like, all right, here's your Kazuya breakdown. Nope, I'm not learning that. Not. It's really honestly, in comparison to Tekken. It's a lot easier. Yeah, it's, well, I'm, it's, sure, it's, it's it's, I'm sure it's ultimately so much more water. It's down. only one button. As long as you make sure that you turned off jump, it, it, if you're up on the stick, is your jump, and you turn that off. Okay, that's on. Yeah, turn that off. I, 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 jump, I can do it both. but it's I jump with the one. X button on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but I'm using the Pro Controller. I never use up the jump anyway. Um... I don't feel like I've been using it lately. I don't oh, you should, if you use up the jump, you need to forget that's a bad habit. Okay. That's a bad habit because you can't do up tilts. Up tilts are super important. Ah, well, I, yeah. Because if you're like me, sometimes you're not patient enough to do just a slight tilt. You're kind of pushing up, and mm-hmm. so you're either going to get a jump or you're going to get a smash attack out of it. But if you just hold it up first and then tap, you get a tilt every time. Okay. So yeah, you know, yeah, turn all that right, off. Right. Turn that off. Do uh, you want me to get one? That's I got a quick one, real quick to burn. Sure. Game Builder Garage. So for Nintendo. For Nintendo, I was super excited about this. I love building games. I love making maps. I've always always have. I really wanted to get into dreams at one point, but especially when it came to VR for the PlayStation, never did. Uh, so this came out and we saw it. It looked interesting. It looks it looks like a Labo kind of. It looks like uh, PlayStation's field. Dreams. Yeah, uh, or not PlayStation. Uh, Media Molecules Media Dreams. dreams. But, but like kind of Nintendified. Like yeah, kind of the Nintendo, Nintendo version, like much. Much uh, more basic stuff. It is, but it isn't. So well, programming is hard, no matter what. Yeah. So they do a really good job. So they 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 are about. I, I'm it's sugar coated. Is that a good term? Yes. Yeah. They do a great job of Nintendo-fying it and making it like almost down to a kid level programming because all of these they're called uh, noddins or something, which are the little programming pieces. Like, hey, I'm like, the like little I'm nodes. The, yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the stick com, uh, stick input noddin. And you need to pick the input yeah, nod. Yeah, what do you want this and, button to do? Yeah, right. And it's stuff like that, but then you get in, so it starts you out building like, you're building like a tag game. And it's a closed end, so it teaches you like, this is how you build walls. And these walls are destructible, these walls are not. And you go in this, and so they, they go through these, and these tutorials are cool, but they'll, you'll see all the tutorials, and it goes from a, a simple 2v2 tag thing with both the Joy-Cons to a 3D puzzle platform. Yeah, um, and you need... Time. And that's the problem. It's each one of those, the puzzle platform, it gives you an estimate like, hey, this is how long it's probably going to take you to do this tutorial. 80 minutes for, yeah. for the puzzle platform. Just to learn just, how, just to learn how to do it. How to learn how to build that game. Yeah, not even build it. If, not if you do your own stuff. Now, but, I bet putting something together feels really good. Kind of. So it's a little frustrating because that's why I tried doing a racing game because I got into the racing game uh, in a, uh, uh, tutorial. And it's still like, I'm like, wait, what am I missing here? And I have to go back to look at that tutorial, watch it, come back, and then experiment. It's a lot of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, try this. It's like real programming. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, it, in that way, it does give you appreciation for developers. But the problem is the Nintendo side of things in that online. It doesn't even, it doesn't even do a good, a good enough job like um, uh, Mario Maker does in that... Searching for maps, searching for it doesn't like have like a favorite oh, list. Like, so it's a, a Nintendo thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's so like to me then that's kind of crushing because like what if I make this really cool thing that I think is good enough? Like I can show you guys. I can do the Awada thing. And, like hey, play my game. Here you go. This will give you joy. 
I'm, it, but if I if no one's ever finding me on the internet, then what am I creating this for? Other than to say I created it and went, look at what I did, and then yeah, this, so, well, yeah, it works in tandem with you know, post your creation on Twitter, and then people find it and see, they share yeah, it. Yeah, but that, and if you're not big into social media, then no one's right. going to see your stuff. There's, it got so bad that someone built a website. It's a game builder garage something something like, dot something yeah. that you can go in and search people's stuff. But and of course, that's again that's Nintendo, and I get it. But it was really crushing to me with that. And then it doesn't. There's it, it. It lets you have a lot of these tools, but then it barricades others. Like you can't use for whatever reason you can't use the directional pad for inputs. You can only use sticks, uh, and you have some of the basic buttons. And it's just yeah. I um I've never been one for creating stuff like yeah. that. I mean, whenever it's really dumbed down and it's like fun to create. Like uh, I used to play this game called Mod Nation Racers on PS3. Yeah, sure. Like it was mm-hmm. fun to create tracks in that game yeah. because of how intuitive and user friendly it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I, I would play a game like uh, Time Splitters Future Perfect that had a map creator, and you could get really deep into that. Creating, yeah, that's, creating, that's that's what I. You used could to create do. missions, and mm-hmm. you could create logic, and you could yeah. create. You know, you could adjust the map to have different color lights. So you can flash right. at different intervals. You could make it to where if you take this item, it would turn the lights off or spawn an enemy or whatever. Yeah. And I just never had the patience or willpower to do that. And that that that's the problem. I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more dumbed down in that regard. And like you said, it, it, when it gets into the, like the second tutorial is a um, a flip game where you take the switch and you flip and you basically remember that old ball marble that marble game where you had to roll the marble mm-hmm. into the hole. It's that. Um, but then it gets into some logic there with counters and like having a counter. Like you need to break four or five of these apples before you go in the hole. And so there's a you need to do this, but if this, but if that, but then this. If, just, if an and. Yeah. yeah, and so like ba- that's, that's basic programming it language. It is. It is. But I, to I my understanding, this, man, I was, <laughs> some programmers probably listen like, God, this guy Brandon is an idiot. He's, he's, talking, like, he, he's right? talking like he knows what he's talking about. Um, but um, I don't normally trade games in. <gasps> I trade this one in. I, I just Fine. I traded today. I mean, let me let me, let me back up. It was 30, I mean, look, it was thirty, it was 30 bucks. Uh, okay, that's and bad. I got fifteen for it from GameStop, that's so not, I got half my, half my money back. I'm 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 just that nerd who never returns anything, whether I like it or not. I'm the same <laughs> way, but like, <laughs> don't I, look behind you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's a yeah, giant yeah, yeah, game, yeah. Right. A game shelf over there right. full of like. But a then I was games. thinking, I was like, mm. September, August, and October are coming. And I need all the money I can get. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, so, and I was going to say two things about Game Builder Garage yeah. I think they're important. Firstly, you need to have a lot of time yes. on your hands to build these things. Yes. And like me, my, my time right now is precious, yeah. and I need to play games that are already made. Right, right. <laughs> uh, let alone games I need to make myself. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a great idea. I've seen some really cool creations on the internet. Like some guy made like a Doom equivalent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but also, I think this is a friendly reminder, because some adults need the same lesson, and especially people who aren't like... Um, um, people like who don't play video games as a hobby. They're not. They don't enjoy the craft. Yeah. Um, but kids need to know this lesson as well. Games don't just come out of nowhere. Oh yeah. People make these games. When I was a kid, I used to get I get Yoshi's Island for Christmas. Came from Santa Claus, and you know what? I would see people's names on the credits, but I just thought it just came from Nintendo. I thought it was just yeah. it came out of this magic factory where video games were produced. I didn't know about programming. I didn't know about creative design. I didn't know about composers making music. I thought that these were real things that existed. Like I thought Star Fox was a real Star Fox that Star Fox. <laughs> 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, no, no. But now, I, think, I mean, look at a movie. Look at the end of The Last of Us, and like, it's so easy. The credits in that that game are longer than movie credits. Yeah, I think what I'm trying to There's say is that many people that it's like. People are so easy to criticize things, but you gotta remember, even some of the games, worst games ever made, yeah. people worked on worked them. on them. And they did the best they could. Well, hopefully they did the best they could. Yeah. But, like, if you play a game like, I don't know... Um, CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk. Knockout City. Yeah. We just talked about Knockout City. You know, you gotta remember, somebody programmed those animations. Mm-hmm. Somebody program the gameplay somebody design those maps like yeah. there's so much that goes into it so it's good to kind of give people a refresher yeah absolutely that these games be respectful like yeah. and that's one thing I actually as a person in my life I've been trying to do is be try, try to find the more positive things because <laughs> it's easy to be negative but it's a lot harder to find something positive to say about something you don't like does the audience know this? No, is? no, no. I don't know. I, I transformed into uh, my very horrible Walter Jr. slash Sylvester Stallone combo. <laughs> it's great, though. But no, you are 100% right. Like, that is the one thing I took away from this game was like, 
programming's hard, and I respect this stuff because this takes time. I knew it was going to take time going into it. I figured right, it's on the Switch. It's a good Switch time waste, or maybe I'm at, I'm at Snap and I have spare, spare time. Mm-hmm. But then as I got into it, went, hmm. And it seems like a great game for the Switch, too. Like, no, absolutely. Like the, for it would, being not, it would not work on Xbox or PlayStation. Maybe on PC with a mouse. Mm-hmm. But definitely switch with the touchpad. That, yeah. that, it excels. Exactly. That's what I'll say. Like the um, way they, I see the, like the connect the dots and stuff. Yeah. So um, it, three out of five. If you're not on that board, don't go buy this game because it's um, not what you're expecting. Um, so stranger. Let's talk a little Conrad? bit. Let's talk about Final Fantasy. Let's jump back into the Final Fantasy train. Okay. Doot, doot. Yeah. Uh, but now we're going a little bit of different direction. Sure. I'm not gonna gush as much. I'm sorry. Yeah, me neither. Real quick, Final Fantasy 15 comrades. I never got to play it. Yeah. Thank you for playing it with me. Yeah. Uh, we finally got to try that out. That's something I always wanted to play. It's a it's a DLC for Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. It's like a multiplayer. It's free, right? It was free on PS5. It yeah. was included with PS Plus. Right. The Royal Edition. The Royal Edition. Yeah. Thank you. There it is. Uh, but. It's basically like a low tier Monster Hunter. I was gonna say Monster Hunter um, Light. I think it was on the right track. Mm-hmm. I think it was like it took some of the mechanics from single player, mm-hmm. let you play with your friends, kind of dumbed it down to where you weren't super powerful and you kind of want to choose your weapons wisely. But it was just kind of loose, and once you kind of get into the main yeah. story of it, it was like, why am I doing this? Like. I didn't even know what's going on the story. Like, well, this, but I didn't play 15. So, well, it, there's a point in 15. Spoiler alert: where the main character disappears for a while. Mm-hmm. And Not this, for for yeah. you for you as a game as as the gamer, it's a blink and you don't realize that like 15 years pass, right? Okay. And this takes place in that gap, that gap where sure. the world has kind of succumbed to darkness and you're fighting these monsters. Yeah. And you keep the king's playing. gone. A prince yeah. is gone. Is he a yeah. prince or king? Prince, kind of. Technically, king to be. Okay. Because the king's gone, and he's a prince, and he was to be wed with the got wife. It. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Anyway. Okay. Um, in, a, in, on a, in a kingdom that's under siege. It's, yes. it's complicated. Yeah. No. It's well, complicated. It's Final Fantasy with the prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know that much. Uh, but either way, it's interesting that they're able to fit it into the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's just like, after I got to the systems of like... You need after you play, you get so yes. many of these watts, right? Well, I was gonna say I couldn't think of the, the amps or whatever. It is. Yeah, you, you get a resource. You got to you got to power these points. And, and there's a that, literally right. a huge electrical grid, and you got to mm. fill in the points. And I was like, man, I'm gonna play this game a lot. lot. It's I was a like, lot you know, of repetition. I'm enjoying it, but I don't want to play the, it. It turned into one of those things where you're gonna play the same missions, mm. you're gonna fight the same monsters, yeah, you're gonna pop up in the same I place. I was like, you know what? I think I'm done. It's good for what it was. Yep. And if this, if you really like the Final Fantasy 15 universe and you got like three or four friends, go for it. But the worst part is like the matchmaking. I don't know oh, what that man. was. That, those layers of trying to get connected. I don't know like, what that, that was. was flipping weird. Super convoluted. Super yeah. user friendly. And no. I was, that was the biggest turnoff. That was bad. But customization like, was cool. Customization was clothes. great. It was amazing. The Final Fantasy clothes. Mm. That universe is pretty cool. Uh, the facial animation, yeah. uh, creating your character, yeah, making your your character in the Final Fantasy it was, universe. It was good. I, well, just the weapons, like playing, playing different weapons, leveling up, and realizing the combat was different with each weapon. I mean, music, that was really cool. Music was, I mean, was great. No um, brainer. But it's one of those games where it, 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 it this will kind of segue into a game we're going to talk about later. It's enhanced playing with friends. I, if you weren't Absolutely. playing with me, I wasn't playing this game at all. Absolutely. Uh, but that's really all I have to say. About yeah, it. me too. I mean, the, the main characters would pop in every now and again. Sure. It was fun, uh, but. It was fun while it lasted, but I'd rather just play single player. So, um, speaking of Final Fantasy, we you know we talked about E3, we talked about the Stranger Paradise demo. I mentioned I had played it. Chaos. Chaos. Um, <sighs> yeah. Ooh. Not for me. Not for me. Um, I could see. So I'm gonna say this. I have my eye on it now, but I like what it's doing. Okay. Yeah. Let me get this out of the way first. Okay, go ahead. Cause I, yeah, go ahead. Me as a gamer, Brandon mm. as a gamer, I am not the biggest fan Souls games. of Souls games. Sure. Is it the difficulty? No. Nah. Is it the universes? No. Nah. I don't know what it is, but I've played Bloodborne. I've played uh, Demon Souls or Dark Souls. One of them, I can't remember. Uh, I just can't get into it. I played Jedi Fallen Je- Order. I was supposed to say, bring that which up. Which is you. almost like taking the same recipe and slapping Star Wars paint on it. Yeah, a little lighter recipe, actually. Yeah, yeah, and I couldn't get into that. Mm-hmm. Something, I don't know, um, it's it's the it's the narrow corridors, yeah. hitting checkpoints, resetting the enemies, putting them in the same spot. It's that stuff, I don't. it doesn't click with me. Mm-hmm. But 
if there's any game I'm going to get into yeah, it'll be this that one. is a Soulsborne type game, sure. it's going to be a Final Fantasy game because, you know, I love Final Fantasy. The combat was fun. I see the goblins running around. Yeah. I see these Final Fantasy enemies. The fireballs. I see, fireball, yeah. I see, fire bombs. Yeah, the, the, the bombs. I see, the, you know, the weapons. I get a, I, I found bombs. a lance. I became a dragoon. I, I found all this cool stuff. Did you really? I did. I didn't get that far. And I'll, I'll explain more, but let me... Let me gripe a little bit. Go ahead. Because I want, I want to talk about... The, I've been gushing a lot. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I don't like to just dunk on things. I like to try to find the positive, but let me get the negative out of the way. The negative out of the way I think so we're I can, on the same page. So I can be positive. Firstly, the environments. Oh, they're so dull and gross. It is dull. It is monotone. PlayStation 2. It is not interesting. I, don't, I was having some weird like graphical issues. Yeah. Like... It, I kind of got like this PSVR screen door effect with certain like yeah, sure. like the grass in that beginning zone uh-huh. or like yeah, characters, that was characters weird. hair um, was it, no, wait, it, or just kind of this weird haze. Let's state this: is this an alpha? Or is this now a this is a this is a demo. Yeah, let's get this out of the way. This is a demo, and all this could be fixed. Sure. And you know what? Maybe they made these sacrifices so we could actually have a demo to play. Get, yes, that's what I was going to. And do. I'm I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. But I am going to put my input where oh, yeah, where, no, no, where no, it needs I, to go. I think I'm on the same page with you. The characters. You got a rip-off Prompto from Final Fantasy yeah, 15. Yeah. A cool-looking black dude. Gladio. And, and probably of. the most boring protagonist I've ever seen in my entire Bill, life. Bill. Ted. His name is Jack. Jack. <laughs> Frank. Bob. And he's like, chaos. Chaos. I want to kill chaos. Where's chaos? Chaos this, chaos that. And I, got, I got blonde hair. Check it out. Yeah, it's blonde hair, buzz cut. I got a scar. Yeah. I'm oh, cool. <laughs> he looks like a generic... Like, he looks like... When you get to the character customization screen, mm. the default model, that's him. It looks like they made this game as a satire of making bad games and generic characters. They did it on Agreed. purpose. Now, a lot of people were talking like, oh, his clothes are boring. Oh, the For, customization went but, bad. But I knew going in, I was like, well, this is a Soulsborne game. You're going to be getting new equipment. And you mm-hmm. get new equipment like the first yeah, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it looks fine. No, I have no problem And depending that. if you want to play Magic Guy, if you want to be more offense or more defense, there's different equipment yeah. to build your class as you go. And you can have two different presets and you can swap them on the fly. Sure. Cool. So you can be a fighter, or you can be a dragoon, or you can be a mage, or you can be a shield guy, or whatever. You can have all those different ones. I, I made again. This is and you this, get to you get to level them up as you get experience. Yes. You can you get skill trees. You can yes. you can level up the fighter. I, I again, this is a beta, alpha, whatever this is. This demo, and we don't know if they're going to add this in. But that, for for what I played already, like why were there the two guys even there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I they mean, attacked. They attacked and they kept people's attention. But I will you can't say, control them. You can't do it's one of those. It's one, talk. Yeah, it's one of those Dark Souls things, and they could just say, "Hey, get good, Brandon." But I just don't like games where it's like I'm fighting something, and because you have to give it your one-on-one attention, you got to be yes. super diligent. You got to read those animations. You got to dodge when you got to dodge. You got to mm-hmm. block when you got to block. You got to parry. It's got a really parry. cool suck in their power skill. That's yeah, really neat. But you know what sucks is whenever you get ganked. And like three things come off screen and shoot that you. That was going to be my thing. There, there was a lane where I fell off and it was like four and, bombs. And I'm like, where are my dudes at? Yeah. If I got teammates, why can't I issue them commands to go keep these guys busy at least mm-hmm. so I can fight this thing one exactly. on one? And so in this, these kinds of games, they they make it your pro- like, it's your fault. If mm-hmm. you if you're losing, it's your fault, and that's fair. That's very fair. But yeah. it's not fair like. Every every character you fight has the potential to kill you. Yeah. The smallest thing, a goblin, yeah. or the last thing you fight. But it's not fair when they just throw it all at you, right? Yes. Now, you get five potions per re, per sure. respawn or per checkpoint. I've never been a fan of that. I like to be like, hey, I found all these potions. These are mine. <laughs> these are mine. I'm using them. Brandon's got the hoarding in his chest holding I'm, I'm the guy who plays Final Fantasy games. I never use any of my... <laughs> I never use any of my elixirs. It's the last battle, yeah. and they're like, Brandon, it's the final battle. You never, like, the game is done. I'm not using my elixirs. Yeah. I collected these. I've only got 16 of they're them. They're going home with me. I've only There's got... people back home that could use this. And then, and then <laughs> Yuffie's dying, like, I, 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 I'm dead. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm going to save my Mega Phoenix down for later. <laughs> and you can have a regular Phoenix down, so I can buy those at the shop. Yeah. I'm that guy. <laughs> but... Whenever I only have five, I'm like, I get like I get stingy with them. Yeah. And then I, and then you don't use them, and then you die. It's just, like I said, I don't think it's bad game design. No, I don't either. I think it's, it's just, a me problem. It's not for me. It's I, just, I agree. like certain types of games, and people like these certain types of games. The combat was great. I was enjoying it. I was enjoying that. Whatever that mechanic is where you hold the trigger in the circle and it absorbs the attack. Like, the one thing was, like, throw the, throw the rock. Or like, oh, the throw parry. A, they'll throw the, a, it's a parry, essentially. Yeah. But you, they'll throw a fireball, and you absorb the fireball, and you throw it back in yeah. the face, which is really cool. And then I got in that hall full of, like, Six fire bombs and they all well, attack. Well, you need so that part you needed to use a mage staff and you need to charge up to level three and use a water spell 
because it clears out all the the flames and it and it's a weak the the fire bombs are weak against it. So the magic, the it's really okay. interesting the way they use the magic because like basically you can hold a stance and the longer you wait, it'll be level one, level two, level three. So uh, basically your your you know uh, Blizzard Blizzard uh, Blizzard yeah yeah. So you have your, your three level and so mm-hmm. you, you can choose the magic you want to use. So it's really interesting the, the way they do the magic. Uh, but, you know, of course, I get the spear. I'm going Dragoon. Yeah. And the Dragoon's more about, like, keeping distance and stuff. And I was doing better once I got that. Yeah. Uh, and I got to the final boss of the demo, never finished it, and I was like, I just can't. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. Because it's one of those things where you just fight him, and you die, and you fight him, and you die, and you fight him, and you die, and you fight him, and you die. And you're like, okay, now I know when I got, you know, he's going to go left, I go right. He's going to go right, I'm going to go left. I'm going to swing here. I'm going to do that. It's like... I just would prefer to fight a you know an enemy in a game that's just kind of naturally gives you the cues, gives you room for mistakes. Because mm-hmm. the final boss, or I say the final boss, is Garland you know, of the in, demo. In the demo, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you're not careful; he'll one shot you. So mm-hmm. it's like you, you, all that learning for nothing. And, and I get it; I understand the meta of the game. I understand what makes it feel good when you play these games, but not for me. Not for me. No. Not for me. <laughs> uh, but game wise. Like I said, if anything's going to get me in this kind of genre, it's, it's going to be a Final sure. game. Got good music. But man, i got to say those environments. I know this is supposed to be like a retelling of the original Final Fantasy game, uh, Final Fantasy 1, which yeah. has plenty of room for that because yeah. it's a very vague story, so much so that the four characters that you choose in the beginning of Final Fantasy have no names. It's, mm. it's a, You just have the four the words of light, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm interested to see what the story does. Yeah. But other than that, it just it, it, it was off because like even the golems had a kind of a cool texture to them. Your your party looks not t- not like you know Final Fantasy VII remake, but they look okay. But right. then the world you're in just it's just so bland. Yeah. It's just so bland and uninteresting. I know it's a very dark castle and that's fine, but man. Yeah, but just... like where else is the environment gonna go? We need more of an idea. Like, yeah. Are we gonna be in like mystical caves? Are we gonna go to some of the locations from the first game? Yeah. We're we gonna go to like kingdoms. We're we gonna like get to go shopping at the the marketplace in the town we visit or is it just going to be a Dark Souls game yeah. that is unfortunately going to be just like it, I literally just wanted to like go and drink six different fluids of highlighter juice and throw up on my TV <laughs> because it was so gray and dark yeah it was bad it looked like I was playing Gears of War 1 I mean, does anybody taste blue um, <laughs> that's how that map felt to me now I'll, I'll say this though look at let me go here, look at something for that's positive you know, we always talk about demos yeah. At, least, at least they gave it to us. They gave us a demo because that's that's that is and in I enjoyed this, it. this day and age that is a that is a double edged sword or that's a coin flip for a developer because like you can throw it out there and go everybody goes ugh and yeah. then now you you've got to fight this marketing to to ship this game that's right. not even out yet or demos, you hype it up demos so, are bold man yeah I think so it was I fine. appreciated that I think it was fine I think um, I just don't think it's for me too I, I agree. Yeah, I think they could they, they could improve the performance. Yes. Um, but either way, I like what they're doing. I like that they're doing something different with, with a Final Fantasy game. Yes. We've talked about it before, um, but not for me. Not for not me. Not for me. Um, I've got three more. Two that we talked together and one like... Let's talk about Fallout 76. Yes, That'll be quick. Away. Okay. We bought. I bought Fallout 76 you for $10. You played it with me for a, a little trial deal way, way back when. This game came out, what, three years ago? Let me Google it. Yeah. But, um... The NPCs are here. I don't know that's a running <laughs> joke, but... They're here. There's people. You can kill people. You can talk to people. You can smuggle people. I'm going to show you. That's GTA 4. <laughs> um, but it, it's... Fallout 76 came out October 23rd, 2018. Okay, so it was... It was compa- Ooh, that'll be four years. That was, a rough, that was a rough year to compete with. We just talked about it earlier yeah. on Snapchat. That'll be four years in that's October. Red Dead, Red Dead God of War. So it's Spider-Man. had time. It's had time to... Rectify itself. Now, yeah. let me get this out of the way. Fallout mm-hmm. 76 is still technically, from a technical standpoint, kind of a mess. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, shootings, kind of, like, the the combat's kind of, it, it's, I don't want to say, it's more <laughs> like, it's mediocre. I'll say this, when I jump back into it, I went, man, I, do I, I want to do this? <laughs> yeah, do I want to do this? And look, we, we, for a long time, still are. Bethesda fans. We defended Bethesda sure. when 4 came out, and then, you know, of course, Skyrim. Man, that engine's old. That uh, engine now is this old. is like, I mean, this we, is a, we talked about it before. We played Fallout 76 before, mm-hmm. back when it first came out. Yeah. And one of our biggest complaints was, of course, it was just glitchy as balls. Oh, it was falling apart at the paid, seams. I paid price for that game. Oof. Yeah. Wait, slow motion. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> 
Uh, but, but they've improved. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a much more stable game. There's, um, a, there's a lot. Let me say that there's a lot of systems going on in this game right what, now. What I didn't like, and when we first played it, was like you were just constantly running back and forth and going to computer terminals mm-hmm. and reading text, and there was nobody no, wants to talk to holotapes and listening to people talk. There and, was no characters. Protector John. Literally, the only people that were around were other players, and mm-hmm. they justified it by saying like, you know, the vault just opened and all that good stuff. And I get it. I right. get it. That's fine. That's fine as well. It's legitimate, mm-hmm. but. You know how much better it is going and doing these stories and having talking to the people. Oh my god! And they they're giving me kind of reasons to choose one thing or the other, mm-hmm. giving me kind of like this sense of morality. Which in this game, it, there's no karma system. It no, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. But it does feel good to kind of see this conflict in between the Brotherhood of Steel and these settlers yeah. and these raiders, and you're kind of it's having a cultist group. you're having narrative to kind of drive your gameplay a little mm-hmm. bit, and it's really helped a lot. And I'm you know I'm enjoying for the most part a lot of these quest lines, and I'm getting rewarded and they, they, they added a scoreboard slash they, battle pass yeah and that's cool they kind of have like reasons for you to log in every day yep. and they have you know daily operations and daily objectives mm-hmm. and the weekly pass objectives free. and you can do it all with friends mm-hmm. and yeah battle pass is free and they have some things that are kind of icky I think the fallout the fallout first program it's a little bit it's a little icky for the price you would pay for it if you were a fan of that game it's not a bad you don't get you so get the, a lot of stuff for you it get private servers mm-hmm. you get you the get, coolest you get 1600 atoms a month a month which is a, uh, that's like the premium currency that yeah. you can buy to new buy customization store, options yeah. or you can buy outfits camp uh, stuff cosmetic stuff yeah. um, or you know uh, icons or photo frames mm-hmm. for photo mode um, but also you get the coolest armor that's ever existed in Fallout history which yeah. is the NCR Ranger outfit screw them for locking that behind yeah, the table. That, that one is locked yeah um but they have some pretty decent cosmetics, and they, can, they have you, a good reason for you to... to it's, it's a lot of fun to... to like, me, me, me and you hopped in, and we were just going through dailies. Yeah. We're hopping into doing events. I was having a really good time. Yeah. Like, figuring out these dailies, like, the big drill thing came out, and it had, like, all, like, the different... Oh, right. And I was like, oh, man, this... Because we were struggling. We're like, man, we need supplies. I need, I need bullets. I need, yeah. I need better guns. God, I'm out of aluminum. And then I was like, here's how we do it. Instead of going around just picking through garbage... You do these events, and it's like you're getting bulk of stuff. Yeah, yeah like, once you I'm, complete that I'm getting worried because my camp, I'm not building fast enough. I, I'm almost out of weight in my, my in freaking stash. camp. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, you get unlimited stash space with Fallout do first. Really? Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, again, if I was playing this game on the regular. Um, but the, like, the, like you said, you mentioned the, the events, the quest lines, the challenges. They even give you challenges to do that are just, they don't have a time limit on them like the, like the weekly challenges, and they, they give you uh, yeah, in like the form eat, of atoms. Eat 25 cooked meat meals. Mm-hmm. Or, but they, give, they give you a way to earn those atoms. Yeah, atoms. You, can you, earn, for, uh, you can earn premium currency. Sure. So it's out there. It's available. So far, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say, man, guys, they have fixed it. it this is a good game. No, you gotta, right, yeah. I find myself kind of doing story stuff on yeah. my own, but like whenever you're not online, I don't find myself getting online Same. quite as much. I'll, I'll get on just to be like... I get on check a few dailies, but I yeah, can do yeah, my own. Yeah, I'll go do some things and kind of go further, but like they just put out a message that, hey, scoreboard's ending in a couple days. Right, it is. When the, last when, week. when the new DLC drops, and I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to try then. So, But it feels good to be back in the Fallout universe. I, I would agree with this. Because I, I really liked 4. It's kind of given me some itches to go back to 4. Yeah. Uh, but there's certain things about 4 that, you know, I praised it a lot when it first came out, and going back and looking, looking at, at it, it now again, I still think it's a great game. Mm. It's not perfect, but as a Fallout game, I have gripes with it, because I see now that it's more of a open world shooter than it is an open world RPG. RPG, yeah. Um, and I really... A lot of people are on that same one, train. One of my biggest complaints about Fallout 4 was just the charisma system, the speech system. Oh, it, man, you get away with anything. You well, enough. you could, but also it was like you just needed to be at 100% everything because like, there was no like percentages for speech yeah, checks. Yeah, it, was it was gambles, so you had a lot of saves coming going on. Like You're just reloading saves, trying to get the right answer. That's annoying. Yeah. Like, you can have low charisma and keep trying the same thing and eventually yeah, and get, it. get it. Yeah, eventually get a chance. Whereas in New Vegas, it was like, okay, you need 75, you have 72, you're not going to pass the check. Mm-hmm. You can either leave here, go level up and increase your speech, or you can just not get those. Give me your gun. <laughs> <laughs> right, <you're> No. Right. <laughs> okay, right. fair enough. And so it was just a bad system. It was just a bad system. Yeah. Um, and the charisma system is 
done better in this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel incentivized yeah. to put certain perks, so the, like the leveling up it's system. It's all about parties, or it's it's really revolves around your party experience I, I felt, playing solo. I felt useful, because yeah. I was injecting myself with Stimpak, and you were healing from yeah. it, which is a charisma perk. Mm -hmm. My charisma's at like 10 now. Yeah. And That's some really cool perk cards, too. Yeah, the perk. Oh, the really one where I got, that. where I've, I've actually had this, this, it was a luck one. I've had it, um... Uh, Q, I don't want to uh, crit, or whatever you want to call it, uh, where you shoot your gun and it, there's a chance it'll repair itself just from shooting it. That's cool. Yeah. So it's really unique stuff. Some neat stuff. It's just, I wish that it was, you know, of course, I wish it was more polished, but um, like certain things for me, like, um, what am I trying to say? I kind of think traveling with caps is a little scummy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I got 250 caps for doing a daily, though. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, they, you, you can. I got, I, got, totally. I got a perk that. You know, it's a charisma perk that makes it where it costs less to oh, fast travel. travel. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think, I think that they've really gotten far. I mean, it's been four years almost, but they, they, they've they done did, a good job. They pulled the, the No Man's Sky next. They pulled a game. Good on, good on Bethesda. I wouldn't go that far, but they're on the right path. Mm, I will, because I mean, it's. Yeah, I'll say that, because No Man's Sky really made a full 180 degrees almost. Yeah, me. I mean, this is still, like, people still laugh at this game. Because, yeah. I mean, it's still, it's still really glitchy. Yeah. It's still kind of falling apart at the seams. But they but good on Bethesda for not giving it up, because they totally could have. They totally could have pulled the EA and said, hey, we ain't working on it anymore. Yeah. We're killing it. Servers are going yeah, offline next right. year. Anthem. Jesus, right. Anthem. Jesus, man. God, I want that game so Jeez. I don't want to go back. That's, that's a, that's but I really, been, I really been enjoying it. Seeing some of the new monsters, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of those. Like, what is that? Moment? I ran into a Wendigo finally. Oh, you did. They're yeah. scary. Um, yeah. yeah I, I think you know, playing with a friend, just experiencing that stuff. That's a lot of fun. I'm really, yeah. I'm actually having a really good time with it. Uh, I don't know why I'm picking up my trivia card. Wrong thing. Um, that's all I really have to say about it. I mean, okay. it's, it's got some of those basic survival systems. You know, drinking. Oh yeah, one last thing I do want to say is that's kind of bad. The user interface. It's so. I know what I'm doing because I play a lot of Fallout games. Yeah. But like, it's easy to get if lost. You're sick and you have a condition and you're trying to fix it. And you don't know where to check it. You got over yeah. the pit boy and you open up the pit boy and you got tab over and there's so many different like. Yeah. Like you have tabs and you have like columns and you got. If you're a newbie to that universe, because it ain't like it, is, it ain't like four where it pauses. It's, no, no, no. It's real time. The pit boy is stuff a good, is going on. Right? It's a good system. Yeah. It, it, for single player, whenever you can pause and take your time. But right. like when you got to scroll through a million things, find a stem pack, and you hear the music going, dun, dun, or dun, 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 dun. what's going or on right now? I can't food. see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or find some food. You know, yeah, it gets kind of tough. So, but I, I'll, I'll report back. I'll play some more. Yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying that as well. I got a quickie for you. Oh, I see it. I we, we we talked about some of our most excited games from E3. Yeah, I talked about Metroid Dread. I was over at my parents' house okay. and I was tired. I saw a and, snap. Why did I not know this? And I I, uh, I had my Switch and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play Super Metroid. Is it on online? It's on. It's on the Super Nintendo um, online thing. Okay. Um, it's on like we have in the classic too. Don't it's on. We? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's on the classic. That's probably why I play it. And so, oh yeah, yeah, you should play it with that original controller. Mm -hmm. mm. Like that. Like like this. It's like, like this. this. It's like a gobble ghoul straight from the from the the bakery. <laughs> the bakery would it be a bakery? A gobble ghoul. A gobble ghoul. You what get is? that from like the the uh, the butcher, wouldn't you? The deli. A gobble a deli. Ghoul. It's like a, it's like a fresh pastrami sandwich <laughs> from the from the straight from the butcher's block. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Super Metroid. Yeah. It's not very often I use the term masterpiece to describe a game. Really? It ha I mean, look, it has things that show its age. Mm -hmm. But from the intro of that game to the end credits, it's so good. The map design is so good. The creature design is so good. The graphics are amazing. The animations are fantastic. The puzzles are great. The uh, incentivizing the sport. This is like... I mean, of course, Metroid 1 is like the the granddaddy of Metroidvania. Yeah. It's the genre name people like to use. Sure, I, I don't like uh, to say it. I, I like to just say, yeah. you know, Metroid games. But I get the comparison. Because um, Symphony of the Night has worked similarly. But this is like the granddaddy right here. Yeah. This is it. This is like where it's made other people want to do it. It's so good. I think the map could... could I mean, it did get improved with, mm. with later games, but, like, it's kind of hard to tell where doors are versus, like, you know, you just gotta run on the map. You'll, it's, it kind of works like a grid, yeah. you know, and it's kind of hard to tell, like, is there a door here that leads to this vertical chasm, or is that just a wall that separates a zone? That can get kind of tough, but other than that, woo, man, this game's so good. Yeah. Like, the rate at which you get certain moves and certain items and what you have to use against certain bosses 
Uh, man. I'll say this, because I never... The music, the music is good. The sense of isolation, the voice that. acting in the beginning, that, that whole, uh, the last Metroid is in captivity, mm-hmm. the galaxy is at peace. That's so awesome, dude. Yeah. So awesome. And, and as someone who has just recently watched all of the original Sigourney Weaver... Tr- oh, like, Aliens. Alien series. movie. I just finished Resurrection yeah. the night. The movie sucks balls. It's not that bad. Resurrection. It's not. It's not, it's it's resurrection. not great. Resurrection. No, okay, it's not abysmal, but it's not. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, I'll give you that. It's not good. Look, the part when the alien gets sucked out of the window. That's cool. That's great. Uh, there's there's but I, I don't like I don't like Clone Ripley that much. I don't like Clone Ripley. I don't either. like Clone Ripley, and, and I, don't, I don't like Winona Ryder. Is uh, she's okay. Synth. She's okay. She's all right. But anyway, side story. Anyways, uh, as as a game, that franchise yeah. is based. Yeah. Loosely off of the Alien franchise, and Super Metroid specifically, man, gives you such such great vibes being I'll, on an alien planet, I might, being isolated. I might pick it up. So let me say this, and I'll say this to, to tack on to that, because this is one of those Super Nintendo games that I miss, because I grew up on the Super Nintendo. I was actually playing a Super Nintendo before you guys were born. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not not to brag, but there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of games that you guys have affinity for that for whatever reason as a kid I didn't I just didn't do. Super it. Metroid was not Metroid was not very own. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Super Metroid, if you were a nerd nerd back sure. then, but uh, but I mean when Samus came to Smash Bros. in '64, yeah. kids kids didn't know who that was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I fortunately did. Did right. But like, I'm not sure. Stephen may have known, but like, if you played Super Smash Brothers. And you, because there was no Metroid game on sixty four. Who's a blast lane? That's that Metroid. Yeah, I mean there was there was Super Metroid mm-hmm. and you know Metroid NES, Super Metroid SNES, and there was a Game Boy game. Yeah. But after the sixty four version, she kind of took off, kind of like how NES did. No yeah. one knew who NES was. I didn't know who NES was. Right. Like in Smash Bros. I mean, Smash Bros. is is directly responsible for making Fire Emblem as popular as it is. Sure. So. Uh, but I I knew about uh, Mega Man. I played the Mega Min. Uh, on the NES, <laughs> but I never played it. I, I fell off at Super, and then going back on the Classic, remember when I, this was years ago when I played Mega Man X, I was like, holy crap, that is a really good game for that time, that, the system that you do. So I can hear and appreciate what you're talking about, uh, so I might have to go back. I'm going to have to do it on the like, Classic, though. The thing about Super Metroid is that, like I said, it shows its age a little bit. There's a lot of, like, so there's, like, there's false walls, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes you can pass through a wall that looks like you can't. Yeah. Or sometimes there might be, like, a, a, a missile upgrade that's in there you can shoot the wall and get the missile um but you find a, 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 a an item later in the game that's a, like a literally a scope that you can scan walls and you can see if there's anything hidden yeah. so it kind of gives you incentive incentivation to just kind of um is that a word Incent- incentivation should make it more anyway true. it incentivizes you to like basically explore every room and yeah. like like oh man i didn't know that there was an energy tank here or you could just use a guide if you really wanted to to walk sure. you through it uh but it's it's you know mega man's more of a you know jump and shoot jump and shoot uh super metroid or any metro game is less shooting and more exploration and i mean you there are boss fights and there are mm-hmm. enemies to fight uh but it, it, there's wall jumps to learn and, and there's certain skills you don't even have to learn yeah you might not even know uh but so good, man. Okay. I really love Super Metroid. I'll do some homework, especially it's, it's, when it's, comes out. It might be like top five best SNES games, I think. It's, it's such mm. a good game. It's mm. really... It's just well put together. Yeah. Like, you get out of a zone and you pop out of an area and you're like, oh, I'm right back here. Mm-hmm. And I have this item now that I can use to get across yeah. this chasm. It's one of those types of games, right? Yeah. So it's like... It, you're always feeling like it's putting you right back where you need to be. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. My whole point is I'm trying to fight these bosses, and I just found this big statue or this big mouth. That's got to be where you know Ridley is. I see a giant dragon mouth over there. Ridley is obviously in there, but I can't pass here because this lava's here, and I'm going to die. Right. But I can't reach up there, so I might need a jumping item, and it's it's one, one of those, those things. things. It's, yeah. it's good. It's a really good game, and I played it. I mean, I, I knew what I was doing. I, mean, I cleared it in like three hours, yeah. but um, man, it's, it's, it's good. It's a good game. It's good game. If you've never played Super Metroid, please... Okay. For dread, for dread's sake. For dread's sake. Play it. Uh, but for time's sake, we have one game left. I have another game. I'll just say I've been playing. So I'm gonna just read this where I wrote. You know, everyone needs that guilty pleasure game. Mine is grindy looter shooter games. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Outriders is this. Outriders. Let me state by saying that Outriders <laughs> is not a great game, but it's a pretty decent good game. If you, it's it's a it's 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 Destiny type 
Like, it's a, it's a, it's, I would say it's like Destiny, you don't, Gears of War. You want that Destiny feel, but you don't want to play Destiny. Yes. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Or maybe you want to play in third person. Yeah, it, it's got it's got a very heavy it's got a very heavy Gears of War feel because everything everybody feels huge, bulky, chunky when you walk. Uh, even pop the, and cover yeah, boom, 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 uh, when you walk. Cover yeah. and shoot. Um, but then you have three. You have four classes. You have a pyromancer. You have a uh, trickster, which hey, is really that's fun. already more than Destiny has. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, you have a uh, they call it Devastator, which is a rock gravity person, which is really cool. And the Techromancer, which is kind of neat, but different but the story sounds cooler than it is yeah yeah uh, so like the real quick backstory the story is you earth earth is went to crap and that we've got to find somewhere this company think of the usmc or whatever it is in halo they figured out there's a planet here that's like earth we can go there but we got to get off the, the planet because they're about the, to... the wayland yutani company from yeah, yeah yeah there you go there you go so <laughs> like we don't know 100 about it but we know it's livable so that's where we're going we're going oh, there's xenomorphs <laughs> xenomorphs in this game uh no but they, are, but, <laughs> but they are creatures there are alien creatures but when you land you're like this so you're the outriders you are the elite what special forces the navy seal whatever you want to call of the earth that's left Just Soldier first class. So yeah, basically. Us. And so you're the guys that got to go down to, to collect the, the information from the beacons that will say, hey, our ship's up here. Can we come down and colonize? And so you do what this storm hits called an anomaly, and it just starts sucking one of your, your teammates up into like this void until she just, whoop, she's gone. One guy just evaporates like the snap in, in the Avengers. And like, what's going on? You get affected, but you don't die, and you get damaged. So one this this lady puts you in cry. Like, I can't figure it out. Everything's falling apart. I'm going to stick you in here. Wake you back up in a little bit. Sorry. You wake up like thirty like years. Like an alien. Thirty years have passed, and the col- find out like an alien too. <laughs> the colony has. They've decided to go ahead and crash down anyways, and not listen to your requests. Oh, no. And now you're stuck in this valley between this anomaly. No one can go anywhere. Well, now this faction has split, and there's a civil war going on for thirty years. That's an interesting story. You, so it's so aside from that, you wake up and you and you find out. That you're altered because of, for whatever reason, the anomaly affects certain people certain ways, and they get these powers. They, they pretty much can't die, um, and so either you're on a you're an altered that is lost their their nutsos and they're just killing people, or you're an altered that kind of helps out with the good guys. So I'm assuming they're the good guys, um, but that's that's the, the plot, and that's that's kind of where I've dug into it. But there's a there's a skill tree. There's three different types of skill trees within each each class. Um, they're, the classes are fun enough. It does a really cool thing in that this game, you're the altered. So, like, you're, like, like the bad guys. You're here. Like, you don't want to play it, like, unless you're the Techromancer. You don't want to play it, like, Division, where I want to snap to cover. I want to come out and shoot. Like, you're that big monster that's charging through and doesn't care. You're that thing. Like, when you run up on the first set of bad guys and you realize you have powers, they're like, it's a freak. Everybody run. Like, they're like... You're like, and then your character says, talking about me? Oh, oh, I have, and then you throw, you throw a fireball, like, oh, okay, cool, and then you just go nuts. So each different class has, what's really unique about it is that each different class powers up or heals themselves in different ways. For example, the trickster can, can think of the hunter from Destiny. They can control space time. What's up, Vincent? Uh, they can control space time. You can teleport behind somebody. You can melee them, and then all of a sudden they go boom, and they slow. Or you can create a force field that it slows like Neo. All the bullets that come into it. Everybody can you throw inside. a basketball at their crotch. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, but for that class, That's you, need, an alien you, you need to be close to kill them, and close quarters cut, kills heal you up. But then the pyromancer, you gotta light people on fire and kill them to heal yourself. That's so cool. they, each one's got a got a gimmick, you should say. So um, it's neat enough. I'll probably do a report back just for time's sake. Quick question. Yeah. What's loot like? Uh, loot's just like a standard looter like shooter. It's apparel guns, or... face, chest, pants, gloves. Boots. Are you liking the stuff you're seeing? As yeah. far as like how like how like the design of it. It's pretty. Ge- I think or generic. Is it just generic space industrial look. Yeah, yeah that's important. Yeah, it, that that's the only thing that w- that would be my gripe so far with that. In in other than the cut the cut scenes were kind of cheaply made. Yeah, yeah you just kind of get you get like a weapon like you get like a new chest piece. Like, okay, this one's better than the other cool. one. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, some of might me, look I'm a little like, later. I'm like, man, I want that greaser. Jacket. Jacket. Yeah, I want that. Something, I want that bomber jacket. They kind of have a little bit of that. It's not too terrible, but I will say that the thing that bothers me is that so they have, of course, just the generic guns. You have an assault rifle, sniper rifle, a light machine gun. You have a, a sub and a shotgun. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of got that that anthem feel, and that they all kind of yeah, shoot a little different. Yeah. But in the, the day, it's still. It's still a gun. Yeah, you're just shooting bullets. But it's only until you get legendary or purple items that have a modifier. So I got a really cool legendary first, for whatever reason, just dropped out of a chest for me that has a modifier where I shoot the guy, it, they, they suspend in frozen time when I shoot him with a shotgun, and then the second shot explodes their bones is what it is now, and they, they just basically blow up into my a bloody bones. paste. <laughs> my bones! 
balls? You literally will freeze them and then shoot them again and they'll explode and kill everybody. My balls! <laughs> There's a guy floating. My balls! My balls! <laughs> so my there's balls. some cool modifiers with higher end stuff, but I haven't gotten there. So gotcha. Um, it's twenty bucks. I paid forty four hey, on sale. That's not bad. Like uh, I said, man, I'm trying to see the positive more yeah. than trying to see the negative. And, and that's 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 one of those games. Like it's one of those games where you're embarrassed. Like when you came in, y'all literally made the joke. You playing Outriders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Wait, did you buy that? Did you buy? Are that? you serious? Yeah, it's one of those like you're embarrassed to play it in front of your friends kind of thing. Well, I'm always everybody goes to bed. Leave, like, leave your leave your vest at the door. <laughs> right. Leave, leave your club vest at the door. But like you said, I've learned to say, you know what? I'm playing this game for me, and I want a good guilty pleasure game when everybody's asleep and just go. That's go why nuts. I bought. That's why I bought Fallout 76. I'll, I'm not gonna lie. Exactly. I, saw, I saw that new DLC coming out, and they showed the pit. And I was like, well, you know what? It's only ten dollars. It's on sale. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it can't be Why that not? bad. You know, so, that's 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 how um, Look, there are other games out there, except you know, other than the best of the best of the best, right? Yeah. You know, it, you, know you can't you can't be a gamer and just you know you can, but just play your God of War and you, yeah, and your your Red Dead. There are other games out there. There's sure. there's bazillions of games yeah. out there. I mean, give them give them a shot. That's right. Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> Xbox Game Day Pass. Day one. Uh, uh, okay. Speaking of masterpieces. Woo! Ratchet and Clank rift apart. I'm gonna say things as someone who's playing this game. Like, like I'm gonna pretend like I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game, and then I'm yeah. gonna say some things about someone who's played every Ratchet and Clank game that's ever come out. Okay. So I think to score them separately like that, solid nine out of ten. Close. I'd say like nine point five to nine point nine. As someone who's, if, the, if I was just playing this for the first time ever, I think it's really, really great. It has a couple flaws, mm-hmm. but as someone who's played every Ratchet and Clank game before this, I'd say more like eight point five. So I, I could one hundred percent agree with you. I'm gonna go ahead. And say, I was gonna say ten out of ten. It's good for someone that does as me, someone that doesn't play the Ratchet and Clank games. Now, but I do understand. Every Ratchet and Clank game's got a beautiful set piece for its console, for its generation. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Ratchet and Clank going commando is better than this game right. or anything like that. This, from a technical standpoint, from level design, from presentation, mm-hmm. oh God, uh, from the, the way the guns feel, the gameplay, the, the moment-to-moment action in this game is unparalleled compared to the old games. I am so glad, I am so glad that Sony's like, hey, five only, guys. This game is just not where it needs to be for four. It's makes not- makes you want to pay 70 bucks for yeah, it, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, I am so glad they didn't do this, the, the four slash five version, because that game would have not. It's, let me get my basic complaints out of the way. Okay, sure. So, oh, really think the, things, the things that aggravated me the most, Okay. first thing, main thing, is that when you get the dinosaur... And you can fly or like, oh, okay. you got you got to go collect the little giblets for it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forget, it's like little stones or whatever. Mm. You're collecting the stuff, right? And you start to see things like, oh wow, these are way up in the sky. How am I supposed to get those? And then it doesn't really tell you as you turn them back in because I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm only coming back once I have all 100. Yeah. And so you, I eventually gave up because I was like, I can't reach these. Yeah. And so then she's like, oh yeah, by the way, she can fly now. I was like, oh well, that's how I get the ones. Mm-hmm. And then so I start flying around. And then there's ones that are like connected to buildings. Mm-hmm. And I was like swooping and hitting. Them. I was like, do I need to shoot them? Do I need to get down and shoot them and knock them loose? It didn't say anything. Okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't freaking get them. Yeah. And then I was like, well, whatever. I, just, I give up. I'm going to go play the main story again. Because I, like I like to complete the planets as I go. I was doing the same thing. And then I turn them all in. He's like, oh, yeah, by the way, she can shoot fire now. So now I was like, oh, well, that's what I needed. Yeah, yeah, shoot them. Why couldn't they tell me that? Because other than that, this game does a phenomenal job of being completely user-friendly, letting you know from the get-go... Mm-hmm. Like what everything does, here's, yeah. How how the game works, what you can do, what you can't do. You, uh, if you pass up a gold bolt on the map, it'll show you where it is, and mm-hmm. you can go back to it even if you don't have the the means to traverse that environment right. to get to it. It it's so user friendly, and I love it when games are so user friendly. Every now and again, I want to play a game that's not handholdy, yeah, but just, just on the cusp of but designed just well mm-hmm. to where I'm not struggling to figure out what I need to freaking do, right. Um, other I have than, a point to, to that. And now, look, I've played I've played Ratchet and Clank games before. I know that there's going to be certain levels I'm going to have to come back to. Yeah. But that particular one just rubbed me the wrong way because like there was one gold bolt I couldn't get on yeah, one planet, I know exactly and I was like, you know what? I know that so I'm probably going to get a special come item back. later because, yeah. like I said, I played a Ratchet and Clank game. I might need some kind of drilling device, or maybe I'll come back to this planet later. I don't know. 
and eventually I progressed in the story. I came back and it was available. I came for back. Me. I came back <laughs> and it was available for me. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's not. It's just I'm nitpicking. No, 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 no. This is, it's a good. It's a good. A, a perfectly good uh, nitpick because, and I'll say, and I, I and I agree with you. I'll say this to say that I sell the part of something that goes with the PlayStation. It's actually away from Ratchet and Clank. In that, so Sargasso, I did the same thing. I knew there was a bolt I needed, and I actually broke the game at one point, getting on the the, the uh, what's it called, the Speedle. Yeah. And I was like in places where I should not have been. Yeah, the, the game because does like, give you some freedom to like once you get those hover boots. Yeah, man, you can, you can just cruise wherever. I was I was like passing up like full sections of enemies because yes. I was like boosting as fast as I could yeah. and and lagging the jumps to where I could just right. skip sections. But there's a part where like sometimes you you'd go to like some of those platforms that were in the in the in the uh, acid and I would just hit a visible wall like uh, uh, not ratchet uh, rivet would hit that wall. So like I was like okay well, what the heck and so I tabbed out and I remembered. That the achievement tabs have the little tutorials. This game does that. Oh, the the PlayStation Plus, the helper. So stuff. I cheated. I totally use all the. I use the, the, the cheating. But, but one like of that. those one of those things was like I was like, wait, let me click on this. I was like, it's like sixty percent gold bolts. And I clicked on it, and it's a little mini video. And of, show you where you What's your name flying on the mount? And shoot, I was like, oh, I can't fly that yet. I'll come back. I'll come back. Um, so like that's not a ratchet and clank because I that's agree a play, with you. That's a, that's, that's, a a play, that's a PlayStation feature by the way. Yes, but that, I was saying that to say I agree with you in the in the in the sense of ratchet and clank as a game. Yes, I agree with you. But in the sense of that's a really cool selling point for PlayStation, and I hope more do that. It'll probably only be I Sony mean, first party. It's not it's not cheating because it's. The they, same, gave, they gave the tools. The it's, same. it's the same as looking it up on YouTube. Right, right, right. What's right. the difference? It's just saving you way more yeah. time. And I appreciate the dev said, hey, here, let's, we'll, we'll make a guide sure. for all these, make yeah. mini clips. So um, I thought that was really cool that they did that. I um, use it a lot. Other than that, um, I have a couple, we'll, we'll do the story. The story's nothing like super special. No. Um, but weapons. I, uh. I love, love, <laughs> love the weapon. Re- what is a Ratchet and Clank game without, without weapons? weapons yeah. Right? Um, there's always been crazy good weapons in uh-huh. Ratchet and Clank. And I think that's a little bit of a detriment because these guns are good. Uh-huh. These guns are really good, but I feel like some of the older games had some more unique, more like crazy, get wild guns. Like I could see that. For example, like the um, well, the Ricochet gun was one of my favorite ones, and that's a very unique. That's, gun. That, yeah, but that one's unique to this one, right? Oh yeah, this one was brand new. That was a, that's a good a good example of yeah. a brand. And then you start new. getting chain guns but, like, and rocket um, launchers. Like and sniper rifles. The the glove of doom. It's been done before in the Ratchet and Clank game yeah. with the Mister Zircons and the um. And it just like every game has just like a little sentry that'll follow you around. Mm. The um or like there's one that has a turret glove. You just throw it. There's a turret and it shoots things. Um, the rocket launcher, like the annihilator thing that you mm. shoot and then it it does massive damage and as you level it up, it shoots off more missiles off of it. Yeah, that's been done before. Like right. that was one of the ones in Going Commando, I think. Um. Like, I wanted to see more of, like, like the bouncer, right? You don't get the bouncer until you finish the game. Yeah, yeah. I and have, the I bouncer did, was yeah. one of my favorite guns in the old one. I was like, man, where was this gun the whole time? Now, yeah. I did play through one challenge mode again to go clean up some trophies. Did you go it? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the That's platinum That's the only trophy. thing I haven't done yet is just go get that Got the platinum sometimes. trophy. And, um, you know, I just wanted more. Not I didn't want returning guns, but I wanted to see a little bit more innovation with the gun, especially with those adaptive triggers, because yeah, they, they could do such cool, like like that one with the under and over barrel. Yeah, that the shotgun. You pull it halfway, it shoots the top barrel. Bottom, it shoots. Boom, boom. Or you can trigger the whole thing and shoot both of them at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then when you level that up, it gets four barrels and yeah. it rotates the whole thing. I want to see more innovation on that, combined with the innovation of the weapon design. Yeah, I, I felt like I'm not. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not poo pooing. I'm just nitpicking here, because mm-hmm. um, I have to nitpick to find something wrong with this game. Um, I like to like you know the lava gun example from um, it was in Going Commando and then further expanded on up your arsenal. How cool would it have been to have like a, a gun that shoots a stream of lava mm-hmm. that as you you know, pull it just the, shoots it, a, it's like a hot glue gun. The you know, pressure you, you, yeah, you yeah, pull yeah. the trigger and gets further and shoots further as you, you yeah, pull the trigger, I, but I it, it uses more of your ammo. Like I want to see some more stuff like that. And I think they're just kind of on the cusp of it. Like, this is the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. We're, we're just figuring this crap out. Yeah. Um, but I would like to have seen a little bit more innovation on the weapon design slash adaptive trigger. To the ricochet, combo. did the ricochet, was it just the one trigger once you shot it? Or could you yeah, go left, right? Just the one trigger. that been cool if it went left, right, left, right, left, yeah. right, left, right. That would have yeah. been neat. But, yeah. but something on that on that line. Yeah, no, yeah. They, they did have like, the left trigger for most. Like, maybe even like the sniper rifle gun, the head hunter, mm-hmm. uh, that I like turns into the headache or the head, or the head migraine or whatever. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, but as you zoom in, it slows down time. Yeah. You know, some of the things like that are like 
the the chain gun was cool. Yeah. But like, you know, as you would kill people, it would turn them into a black hole and they'd suck away. But there was a gun in up your arsenal that you would shoot. It would make a black hole, and as you leveled it up, it would shoot out electrical rifts that would shock people and then suck them into the hole. And then yeah. it, would, it would suck in all the nearby crates and the money and send it straight to you. you know? Stuff That's like cool. that, or like the Quackinator or the sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, stuff like that. Oh, more um, guns. And then uh, the puzzles, the puzzles were fine. Yeah, logic puzzles for Clank you know, was really cool. Um, I, I did like to see. Um, and then Gizmo's little mini game. They had way more gadgets in the older games. Like mm-hmm. they had this one thing where you were melting water and freezing water to make platforms and swim. Uh, there really is not a lot of swimming in this game. No. There's a part where you walk underwater, but the swimming kind of got cut. Yeah. Uh, and the swimming was kind of like a big thing in the older ones as well. Um, other than that, phenomenal level design. Oh my gosh, so good. Phenomenal creature design. Yeah. The guns all feel good. The game, the, the moment-to-moment game feels uh, really good. I love switching, hitting the um, uh, what's the crystals name? The purple crystals. Oh yeah, uh, you're going, switching, you're going, switching the different dimensions. Yeah, you're going back and forth between like so the planet the, that's destroyed versus the planet that's when, when uh, what's his name? The little creature underwater is chasing you, and you've literally got to go think and go, woo, okay, yeah, I'm back in this universe. That Whoa. invincible creature. Yeah. yeah, they never really had. Uh, a moment of horror in a, I was, in a Ratchet I mean, game it's before. pretty scary. At least not like on that caliber. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Story wise, you know, it's you know, Clank is, ce- is is you know celebrating his friendship with Ratchet, and you know, he has a Dimensionator. Yeah. So it goes wrong, of course, and Doctor Nefarious uses it to go to a dimension where he always wins, and that's where Emperor Nefarious lives. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think the that's kit- also where Rivet lives. As I well. think the Kit Rivet is the the biggest twist slash um, neat part of that story I think being that yeah so we saw you know there's a clank equivalent with with yeah, Kit, Kit and there was a point in the story I told you about it where like they kind of get separated they kind of uh, get flip flopped right. I was like if Clank goes with Rivet to her place and, and Kit goes back to Ratchet with hit to, to, to there, yeah. I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Ratchet and Clank. Clank. Yeah, 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 I know. No, but I'm not trying to be like a, a gatekeeper or anything, right. but I just didn't want to see that because I love the, the. Yeah, the dynamic that you, um, you, you, you know and love. Right, right, right. And so, you know, the story, you know. Rivet finds Clank, and then you know he's looking for Ratchet, and then eventually they cross paths, and they have to team up to take out Emperor Nefarious because mm-hmm. Emperor Nefarious, he always he ain't wins. no joke. You know, he always wins, whereas yeah. Doctor Nefarious is always losing yeah. and doing stupid. He's goof. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Can we talk about just some of the, the the humor that Ratchet and this like there was moments in the the, the movie remake, the sixteen Ratchet Clank, I was like, eh. but there were some moments where I was like, I laughed out loud, and says like, what? I was like, nothing. I got it. It's, it, like the, the part where he's sneaking up, and it's like Clank. He sees it, and and the fairy spins around and goes, shh, what? <laughs> he just slaps the crap yeah. out of him. Dude, there's a lot of really good humor, even in the old games. Yeah. Um, God, I got. I gotta find some of these cutscenes to send to you because they, they were man, they were so good. If you if they ever do like a HD, yeah, uh, like, oh, I will, or just like a remaster because mm-hmm. I have the remaster on PS3. Uh, but if they do a trilogy pack, dude, you gotta pick those up. The dinosaur where you go through the pirate level and like the terrifying the. Yeah, we didn't feed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or there's other one where he's like, this part's broken. Just just, just go it. on. Just, yeah. just go on. Um, there was um, kind of a lack of. Of mini games, and comp- comp- of course, I'm comparing yeah. to the old ones. Like there used to be like hoverboard racing. I remember that one and, from the uh, um, yeah the movie. Oh yeah, that's right. They, so they did in the last mm-hmm. one. Uh, there was like hover bikes you could do in um, going commando. Oh, last thing, uh, maybe last nitpick. Okay, sorry. The arena is kind of lackluster. Compared, compared to? to the old ones. Okay. The arenas had way more events. Yeah. Uh, there was like boss battles specifically for that. Like it wasn't repeat boss battles. Yeah. Uh, it was boss battles specifically for the arena, especially in Up Your Arsenal. I mean, heck, the arena got so like good. They made a game called Ratchet Deadlocked. Which yeah. Is the right. That is literally just, as just as a game is. about being in the arena setting. Mm-hmm. And it was good. It was a decent game. Um, but this one, it was just like. In because compa- you didn't even get to play as Ratchet in the arena. No, it's always it's rivet. only Rivet. And I was like, man, I really would have liked the scene. Um, just like, I don't know, maybe like flip flopping between the two on the same level or yeah. something. Uh, but I, just comparing it to the old arenas. Yeah, see, I don't have that. I then. felt like it could have been a little bit more, but um, it's more concise this way. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like it's it's you know it's like that for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, um, story wise. I do have some not complaints, but like, yeah, I, I hate to sound like I'm poo pooing, but um, I don't know where they're going. Like, right, so okay, no, I, I Ratchet and Clank one, yeah, 
the the last game that came out that's based on the movie, that's mm-hmm. based on the game, it's a reboot of the first game. Yeah. Going Commando is the sec- second game, right? So back in the PS2 days, Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, Up Your Arsenal, Deadlocked, and there were some PSP games in there somewhere. There was a uh, Secret Agent Clank and Size Matters, and then after that there was Future Tools of Destruction, yeah. uh, Quest for Booty, and Kraken Time, all this stuff. All that is undone. None of that matters. None of that matters because this was rebooted, right? Mm-hmm. Going Commando never happened. Up Your Arsenal never happened. None of that stuff ever happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, you know, Captain Cork has a lot to do with Up Your Arsenal. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of a big deal that Ratchet sees a Lombax. It's like, oh, that's another Lombax. We saw another Lombax in Going Commando. We saw another Lombax in Cracking Time. Mm-hmm. We've seen Lombax. We've seen a lot of Lombaxes. Yeah. But now it's like, it's kind of undone. So where are those Lombaxes at? Yeah, because he's taught, he wants to find the Lombaxes, and he they, maybe they're gonna come back in that in the in the sequel or, or I don't know, um, but like you know how Kit turns into the big super yeah, Clint did that in Going Commando. Oh, did he? He turned the big because she's like, oh, I was a warbot. Clint was, was a Clint warbot. Was a robot. Okay. Yeah, and he in, in Going Commando he turns big, and you have like these big Godzilla battles and these little tiny planets. They're yeah. still, like like Mario Galaxy sized oh, planets. Cool. And you walk around and you're fighting these big monsters, and then like Secret Agent Clank happening up your arsenal. Um, so I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know. all these things happen, and so I, as I was like, "Oh, this is cool to see." They're kind of redoing it in a different way. But I was like, "What about Clank? Is Clank gonna turn into a giant war bike?" Yeah, he turned like he didn't turn it to where like he couldn't control himself or anything, but it happened. Yeah, uh, and like in the like in the last one of the last battles in uh, uh, Going Commando, or heck, maybe even the first one. I can't remember. I'm starting to blur my lines. He didn't do that in the remake, in the but now the remake, no. Yeah, yeah, so that we don't know if he does it at all in this universe. Right, 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 right. right. So. I'm just kind of confused on where they're going with all this. Yeah. Like, is Deadlock going to happen again? Are they going to bring some of these characters back? Are they yeah. just undoing it all? As a Ratchet and Clank fan, I just want to know the answers to yeah. all those questions. Did, did, um, so Ratchet mentioned something about his dad at one point. Did he not? Did I miss that? His oh, dad yeah, did yeah, yeah, something? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Do you think the cartographer that talks to you on, could that be his dad? Because he mentioned about how his dad mapped or something or did something. I or don't know. I don't know. And then at well, the very, you're talking about from the Lorbs. The, the Lorbs, yeah. At the very end, he's like, "Hey, I gotta go now. We've mapped all these dimensions. We're going to this planet. Maybe so? If you, you get there, come find me." Now, all these Lombaxes that we've met before, other than the one in the time one, I'm not gonna get into that. But yeah. like the one from Going Commando, she just shows up and she's like, "Hey, I'm a, I'm a female Lombax." And he's like, "Oh, I need to know more about the Lombaxes." And she's like, "Oh, I'll tell you more about it later." And nothing kind of they never really did yeah, anything with elaborate it. on. I mean, she shows back up in some future games very, very briefly, but other than that, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um. But all that being said, mm. it was a phenomenal game. Loads in like, oh my gosh, I can't. I, I blink the games right. Yes. Um, there's, it's, voice it's, acting's incredible. Voice acting's amazing. Music's... I, I love the controller. Like, whenever it's like, hey, I need to go find Club Nefarious, and you can feel the yeah. beat, and you control, you can hear it, and as you follow it, it's it's just like environmental yes. uh, clues to lead you in the direction where you need to go. Yeah. Um, but, Zircon's bar. I, I say I spent so much time there just watching everybody. Like the the, the um, what's the alligator guys? The bros. I forget what they call uh, them. The, like the 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 thugs for hire. Yeah, they're sitting there playing an arcade game. I sit there and watch them do that. You know, you can go over the disco thing and dance. Uh, Rivet can do a bunch of dances and change yeah. the music. You can change, yeah, um, change the music. Um, but just I, I know that if anyone's listening, I know the universes and set pieces in Ratchet and Clank is the staple. I get it, but like. Just seeing it like this, seeing it in this. And Remember that bit, that snap I sent you? Just, just I've just I spent 15 minutes in the underground wa- level just in the water, like, jumping and splashing, and making the, making the ripples jump in the water. The ray tra- and, yeah. and then there's like the three or four different performance modes. At yeah. first, I went to just performance at 30 frames per second. That's what I was doing. And I was like, man, this is pretty good. Oh my god, when I put it on and, 60, and then I put it on performance RT, right? And where everything runs at 60, 60 but with ray tracing scale. I think it's like less resolution than 4K. The resolution's like, dumbed down just a little bit. I was like, you know what? Screw resolution at this point. Oh my gosh. Because this game in particular really benefits from 60 frames per second. Now, yeah. you know me, I'm not a graphics snob, but no. because it's animated like a like a Pixar like movie. Like you see like a Pixar movie, yeah. it lends itself so well to that. And oh. then also just the gameplay is so much smoother. Yeah. Um, and th- some of the new abilities that they added, like yeah, the, the, like the phase the, jump, the dash, they never had a dash like mm-hmm. that. You can straight sprint in this game. Yeah, couldn't do that in the old ones. I, l- I mean, even the rocket boots as broken as they were, just using the, the do, just, do, do, just just to push yeah, off like the your rollerblading. Yeah. yeah, and I mean the the HD rumble and the the dual sense just 
You know, like Astrobot did was like the test demo of like, here's what it feels like to walk on grass. This is what it feels like to. They do that in this game. Yeah. And you can feel it rumble. Like each footstep you take is like left, right, left, right. You can feel it in each hand. Oh my gosh. Did you, play, so did you ever play with your headphones on? Yes. The, the, the noises for the guns come yeah. out of the controller. Yeah. Yeah, and then like they, there were certain things that were like the the controller would vibrate, like and it would create music and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was wild, man. That's, that game. I mean, I was not expecting any less because <laughs> yeah. I love Ratchet and Clank games. Uh, well, the, the, sorry, I keep bumping the table. So the 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 remake, I bounced off of it and I never beat it. I got about midways in that game, and it was good. I'm not it's, saying it, it's fine. And it's I don't, I, don't I, can't, I honestly can't remember if there was something else came up that distracted me. But I was like, this is a, this is okay. I get it. I get the why. I I, I wish I would have grew up with these games. Why did I miss out on them? But like, if I'd have played this one first, I would have been like, let me buy all the Ratchet and Clank games because this. Game, I know it won't be like that. But yeah. like, no, this, they're still they're still really good. This, I think they. Hold up! I think for PS2 games, they, yeah, oh, I'm sure. In my personal opinion, they really yeah. hold up. Uh, ex- I think the first one, not so much. The yeah. first one is okay. It's like they weren't super inventive with the weapons yet. Yeah. Well, they just it they, was just kind of like here's a our game mascot yeah. platformer shooty bang bang sure. game. And then when people really liked it, and, we and then Go and Commando really stepped it up. Like I mean, it was like they up their arsenal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Some people are, are kind of complaining because they like you know each each. Uh, each game subtitle is like a reference, like yeah. going commando, yeah. not wearing underwear, up your up, up your arsenal, yeah. a crack in time quest for booty, and then like, well, rift apart. Yeah. It sounds a little bit like rip, ripped, ripped apart. Ripped apart. <laughs> yeah. So that might be the the thing. The there. Thing, yeah. You um, can't, the the riffs themselves are really cool. I mean, I, I get the oh, I get yeah, the hidden yeah. bells and whistles. How the game works. Using, doing yeah, that. throwing the teleport, just kind of mm-hmm. shooting over there, get behind an enemy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think it was a. And then once again, I'm a hardened Ratchet and Clank veteran. Sure, go ahead. It's a little easy. It's a little bit easy for me. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure it was. I, I played on I... normal, and then I eventually wanted to kick it back up a little bit because mm-hmm. um, I mean it, it, it was not. I don't want to say not a challenge, but yeah. Sometimes I want a game that's just challenging enough. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be struggling like I want to play Village of Shadows mode on Resident Evil. I don't want to yeah. ruin it for me. I yeah. want. I want to play it. Kind of how it's intended. Well, the very end, we'll spoil this. The very end, of course, and, and most I'm sure the other rats probably did that. The bolts unlock not only um, the multipliers, multipliers, but they also unlock uh, cheats. At the very end, you get God mode, you get infinite ammo. Yeah. I, I never turned infinite ammo on just simply because I like the way the game. Oh, I let did. You... I, I turned on infinite ammo just to use the rhino. Ah. Uh, just to just spam just drop, the rhino. Just drop stuff on everybody. Did you? Face. Did you use the rhino? Oh yeah, I used did, it on the nefarious battle. Did you upgrade it all the way? No, not yet. Did you know when you upgrade it? Mm-hmm. And one of the one of the bonuses, the upgrade system. I forgot to talk about that. It, yes. It's returning from the other one. Sure, yeah, it's, it's the, the, same. the hexagonal, mm-hmm. hexagonal. If you're touching the system. yellow hexes, it, it gives you the bonus um, modifier. But one of the bonuses when you make the circle all the way around the nodes and you unlock the special thing, mm-hmm. it, it what it does is it warps pieces from other dimensions. Ah. You can drop a thunder jaw from <laughs> from Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, straight into there. What? And it'll just poof, and it'll, it'll sit there for a second, and it'll kind of roar, and it'll just kind of dissipate. Yeah. Sly Cooper's van, Jack and Daxter, they show yeah, up. That's real. Sly Cooper. That's crazy. Um, the Sly Cooper's friend and uh, the little turtle in the wheelchair. Uh, for his name, <laughs> he pops up. Um, all kinds of different things, yeah. like from different games, show up, which is really cool. That's cool. Like one of the little mascot thingies from Sunset Overdrive. It's an Easter egg gun. Pretty much, and yeah. also it, it's a BFG, clear yeah, screen. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But uh, no, super fun. Super yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. But I liked how they, I liked how I turned, I turned the infinite off just because I liked like, okay, well I'm out of a ricochet. I guess I'm a, it gave you the reason to switch to your guns instead of just stick with that one that you always use. I was constantly cycling through guns to switch them. Oh yeah, them. throw down the little, the uh, the little plant gun. Yeah, solidify the, the sprinkler. People. Yeah, you know, throw a bunch of shatter grenades. Yeah, shoot a couple blades, have them circle around, yeah. throw a zircon out or whatever. Yeah. Mr. Fun guy. Yeah, fun guy. Mr. Fun guy. <laughs> Upgrade like dude, the, just upgrading the guns as you go. You feel so incentivized to spend the, that rare retainer yes. on, on yeah, upgrading your gun, getting it to level five, so you get that next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a shotgun turns into a boomstick, essentially, yeah. uh, and that's that's classic ratchet. Sure, game. yeah, classic it's returning. Um, oh man, it's it's this right now is probably at the top of my game of the year list. It's really good. I don't know. I mean, we got we got some bangers coming in. in it's well, really good. Supposed bangers coming in October. Let's say that. Yeah, let's 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 plan on them coming out. Let's plan on them coming out. So as of right now, uh, I'm trying to look. I guess I got a note thing of my uh, my games of the year so far. Oh, really? You've been taking? Well, I, I've been taking uh, notes. Not really in order, but just yeah. games I've played. Uh huh. Um, 
So, I mean, the competition so far for Ratchet. Oh, Resident Evil. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Valheim, Resident Evil 8, It Takes Two, Hitman 3, oh, Yuffie nice. DLC, yeah. and then uh, I put on here that Far Cry 6 is coming out, yeah. Back for Blood's coming out, yeah, Mario coming Golf, and it came out. Yes, that's already out. I want to play that. Um, Supposedly, the Guardians just come out. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Dying Light Two. Yeah. Uh, I know you don't care about Battlefield 1942. 2042. 1976. 48. Uh, <laughs> it's discotheque. But we've been running along. We've been running along. Oh my gosh! Woo! Right, we broke hour, the two. We're at the two hour mark. I went to do some compressing to I'm get gonna, this to I'm, I'm gonna have to go do some apologizing to my wife. Is oh that... man. <laughs> we, uh, dude, I, we, we knew. It was I told her it was gonna be unpacking, but I... we knew it was Woo! a big one. Anyway. Our trivia card. Okay, so hit me with that number one. Question we... number one. Mona Sachs is the femme fatale love interest of which video game character? Can I take a guess? Uh, no. Max Payne. Oh. And Max Payne 2. Okay. And then question number two. Who is the first boss in the original Crash Bandicoot? Papu Papu. Papu Papu, that's right. Yeah. And he's also the first boss in Crash Team Racing. Yeah. Or, is he? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. If, yeah, you do, he is. if you do that mode. Yeah, yeah in the adventure mode. Yeah. Anyway, hey, look. Thanks so much for listening. This is I a feel big tired. one. There's a lot, dude. <laughs> keeping it under two. This is tough. I want to sleep. It's tough. I want to sleep. Now. Uh, I drink a whole bottle of water. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please, please, please share it with your friends. Yeah. Subscribe to our RSS feed. We we try to put out episodes every week. Yeah. I, you know, I try for the most part. Um, Those gamer tales are an episode. One thing I was going to talk about is here's a little preview. Uh, one of the reasons you should really listen to the show is because. We're not industry professionals. No. We are consumers just like you. you yes. Right? Yeah. We are fans of the industry. We love playing video games. We've always loved playing video games. And so our input is based on that. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to tell you, well, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 gets a 6.5. Uh, I'm IGN. Too much water. You know, not that. <laughs> my my <laughs> review for Final Fantasy VII original is going to be way different than somebody else. Yeah. Somebody might not like RPGs. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know what? You know what's refreshing? Listening to other people's opinions. Like-minded opinions. And hearing other people's perspectives. Because you know what? You might just learn something. Or you mm-hmm. might just see something from someone else's perspective yeah. that you didn't think about before. Yeah, finger guns. Finger guns. <laughs> I'm Brandon. I'm Jacob. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you at some point later in the future. <laughs> <laughs>